It's... Hello, good morning everyone! Welcome back to another episode of Muckluck Streams. I'm your charming, self-proclaimed, yet still humble host, Muckluck. Today is Guild Wars Tuesday, where of course we're getting back to our roots. We're going to be playing some Guild Wars 2 today. A lot of exciting stuff going on in Guild Wars 2 lately. Uh, yesterday, I uh, posted a news video about what was going on. For those who didn't see it, they said that they were doing a patch today that is going to make it to where you can inspect people's cosmetics. And I'd say most people either A, do not care about that at all. I would say people are either A, they don't care about that and it's just like, okay, whatever. Uh, or B, they're like, I've been waiting for this for 10 years! Uh, you know, or somewhere in between. Uh, I think the most interesting part is the fact that they're doing a patch for that today means there's a patch today. And there could be other things as well. I'm curious about what that other stuff is. In addition to that, uh, we also got a picture yesterday that was a sneak peek at the fifth expansion. I did a video on that yesterday. Wooden Potatoes has a video where he talks about what's in that picture for like 25 minutes. So if you want like a full breakdown, definitely check those out. Uh, but yeah, it, uh, it is a very, very tiny sneak peek. Just one still image that went up yesterday. Uh, it's the SAB patch today. Uh, yeah, Super Adventure Box. There you go. Uh, I'm gonna inspect people left, right, and center. <laughs> Jokes on them, I can't inspect if my character is naked. It, it's true. The, the naked Norn has the full counter to that. Uh, only 25 minutes. I expected three hours at least. Well, you know, he's resting. <laughs> he's all washed up. Only making 25 minute videos about a single image. All washed up. Uh, Blue says, I see Chip. You, what? No, no you don't. He's not in here. What do you mean you see Chip? You know, I could just have a still image of Chip as like a loaf above the minimap. Uh, and I think it would probably fool a lot of the regulars. They'd be like, oh, he's sleeping. What makes your location pop up in the center of the screen? Uh, it's a module called Regions of Tyria in the Blish Hood overlay. Uh, exclamation mark Blish if you need a guide on that. He was there for a second when you started the stream. I've literally not turned his camera on today at all. And I, I don't know where he is. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm worried about you. <laughs> I'm worried about you. Maybe it was from the intro. Hello. Hello, Audi. Chip used stealth. Maybe he did. Morning NA, afternoon EU. Good morning. Yeah, it's 10 a.m. here. Here goes the same blush question for two hours. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, the module does so little, but it prompts more questions about Blishhood than any of the other Blish modules I use. I want to ask, do you have an opinion on the current discussion regarding the inspect option happening on the forums? Yeah, I, I'm human, I have opinions. <laughs> uh, oh god, alright. I, I, I kind of don't even want to go into this because it's like... I, as a parent, I look at what's happening on the forum right now as, like, unruly stupid children. Okay? Yeah, I, I have opinions. Uh, hello, first time here, long time YouTube subscriber, love you guys. Hello, Numagi. Thank you for stopping by, welcome. Yeah, we are currently live on Twitch and YouTube right now, so pick whatever one you desire. Uh, okay, so let, let's get everyone involved in the conversation here. So yesterday, they show... Uh, they talk about the co the cosmetic inspect feature coming out. The ability to click on someone and like right click him and there will be an inspect cosmetics and you can be like, oh, what's the name of that helmet? I, w I would like to get that. And you can find out where it's from very easily and then you can try to get it yourself if you want to. So then, <laughs> I never would have expected this. So people started saying, how do I turn this off? I don't want people to be able to inspect me and steal my look that I worked so hard to create. So, they want to gatekeep fashion. 
Uh, there are people that don't want that feature because they want to gatekeep fashion. Now, someone said, do I have an opinion on that? Yeah, I've got an opinion on that. Like, one... We didn't create... We, the players, didn't make these models. Yeah, you might have taken Model A and Model B and, you know, I'm gonna put these gloves with these shoulder pads. We're not even the artists that made this stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, okay, you, you mixed and matched it. Good. Like, I mix and matched my stuff, too, to make it look how I like it. Like, that's fine. But I feel like saying that, like, like being mad that people will steal your look when you're using like you know a hat you got at one store and gloves you got at another store and put it like i don't know that that kind of screams the audacity to me like and then beyond that there's nothing stopping them from doing that in the first place it's just you've just made it slightly easier for them my third thought is what makes you think anyone wants your look <laughs> I feel like most endgame players I run into just look like a light bulb. So, yeah, I, I I think the whole discussion is stupid. Now, do I care about Cosmetic Inspect? For me personally? No, I don't. I You guys know me. I got, I got my wizard hat set up on all my characters. I have hardly changed the fashion on any of my tunes in like a year. I'm very happy with how my boys look, and they're settled, right? I also already have 12 plus clones of me running around in the game that I have seen. Like, people have already stole my look. Like, you know the meme where the guy's in the news and he's like, first time? Like, that's me to the people going, they're just gonna steal my look. But you know what? It doesn't hurt me at all. So, it's... It's whatever. It's whatever. I mean, these people are acting like they're they are the artists that drew this this armor by hand, and then some AI, you know, stole it. Which, for the record, yeah, I could understand getting mad about that, but that's not what this is. That's not what this is. They've invented like a fake person that they think is going to steal their look, and that will in some way hurt them. And none of that's true. Uh, next mission, everyone copy Muck Garden Gnome Invasion. <laughs> Uh, gear inspect is bad coming from WoW. Ge okay, so let's talk about that. You said gear inspect? We're talking about cosmetic inspect. Cosmetic inspect is someone can uh, inspect me and go, Oh, that's wizard's hat. They don't see the superior rune of the monk, and they don't see it currently has um, giver's stats on it. Like, they cannot see the stats, and they cannot see the runes or sigils. That's cosmetic inspect. Gear inspect, they can look at you and go, oh, you're not in full berserkers, you've got marauder's gloves, and then they kick you from the group. That's a bad, that's, that's like an example of gear inspect, right? Now, tap, tap. gear inspect has pros and cons. Like, one, uh, maybe your tank is dying. And you could be able to inspect him and be like, hey, dude, I think you might be in the wrong gear. You've got, like, no toughness on. And he might be like, oh, crap. Yeah, all right, thanks. You know, that's an example of gear inspect saving a raid from dying one more time. However, gear inspect also has a long history in MMOs of being used, you know, with toxicity. People inspect, like, people, uh, you, you join a group. And then, like, you're in the group for a second, and they inspect you, and they see something they're not happy with, and then they kick you from the group, and then they're, they're like, continue looking for someone else to take that slot. You know, that would be an example of someone being used in a toxic way. Now, un again, I, I mentioned I can see both sides, right? Those are examples of both of the ways, you know, like, the good and the bad. I honestly think it's used for bad more often than good. However, whether it's in the game or not, I'd be I just kind of shrug and I would continue enjoying this game. My next thought on that though is not that I would be really bothered by it being in the game. Again, as many of you know, I played WoW before this for a decade. It had gear inspect whatever. I don't, you know, I'm I can deal with that. That's fine. However, that would be compromising one of the pillars 
that Guild Wars 2 identified itself as when it came out. When they said, we're not going to be like other MMOs. We're not going to have tank healer DPS, which they've already broken that. They said, we're not going to have like gear and spec because people are toxic with it. We're going to have shared loot on everything. We're, you know, we're going to give people XP when they revive each other. There was so many little things they did to make themselves not like the other MMOs. And then, you know, to, to make it to where there's not a toxic player base. So I would say adding the ability to full-on inspect others' gear on its own doesn't really bother me at all. But I think it would be kind of sad for Guild Wars 2 to take one more step down that road. Like, one more step down the road of being not what it is anymore. Which is a place that is, like, has the nicest player base ever. Now, are there a few silly ding-dongs on the forums that are screaming that uh, people are going to steal my fashion? Yeah. But, for the majority, it's, like, the nicest player base ever. I forgot about WoW loot drop mechanics. Yeah. In early WoW, if... Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, Time Lost Protodrake was a rare mount uh, that spawned in uh, Northrend once a day. And so one person on the server could get it a day. And if you saw someone fighting the Time Lost Proto Drake and they were about to get them out, the best, like, for you, the, the thing that would benefit you the most, thing that you could do, was get aggro of a bunch of other stuff and try to run over that person and get them killed by those monsters. And then when they die, the time loss proto Drake would reset, and then you attack it, and then it's your kill now. You know, that kind of behavior was rampant in early WoW. Now, that's why Guild Wars 2 had shared loot from the beginning, is to not promote that. So in Guild Wars 2, if you see someone low health fighting something rare, you could just join in and help them, and you both get a copy of the loot. Uh, but they... WoW did change that later on, but Guild Wars 2's been that way since the beginning. All his characters are Asura. No, there's one sneaky boy in there. The gloves boots combo is their whole identity. How will they go on now? I mean, I guess they'll go to the store and get new gloves. <laughs> What's up, everyone? What's up, you men? The tool isn't the issue. Toxic people would be toxic anyway. People could see you underperform very clearly a lot of the time already without needing a DPS check add-on, but the other side is that people could tell you what is wrong with your gear if you struggle with your content. I would totally fine with extra gear inspected exclusively in Raid Strike Fractal instances. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I would be fine if they added gear inspect to the whole game, uh, or if they just didn't at all or anywhere in between, because I'm used, I'm used to it in all forms. But, yeah, I, I think it would be kind of a shame, because it would basically be like, oh, let's, uh, you know, there was this, he, this was one of the things that made Guild Wars 2 player base such a great place. And then that would be just one more thing taken away. I'd still be here. I think it would just be a shame. Hold on, I have to play the whack-a-mole game. Using both brain cells. Okay. I saw a human engineer. Yep. Yeah. What modules would you suggest for Blish? Depends what you like. Um, ones that I could no longer live without. Radio mount menu. Access all my mounts from one key. Just hold key down, move to what I want, and release it. Like, some of my mounts here, I don't even remember how to access them without this wheel. So, that one is essential for me. Beyond that, I use event timers a lot. Um, what else? Uh, the Regions of Tyria is just a fun thing that's installed. It's not necessary, but I like it. Uh, this is the the timers. I can use this to see what stuff's coming up, so that's handy. It just kind of prevents me from having to open the wiki on another screen. Uh, it's the, the sound reality in life that every tool can be abused for bad or abused for good. Yeah. I'm actually reminded of a um, thing that Pirate Software talks about uh, recently. He said any, any game has a thing that developers call TTP or uh, time to uh, penis. <laughs> and basically... Uh, anytime they give players any creative control, the first thing players do is draw a dingle dangle. That's it. In every game, if they give players any creative control, the first thing they do is draw dingle dangles. And so they, they, they've got that, like, on the developer back end. TTP. 
Can't seem to figure out how to get that module to work because it's got random bindings or something that not work for me. Hmm. Guild Wars 1 drawing on the map. Oh yeah, I've seen people in Guild Wars 2 uh, that, because in, um, uh, I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, in Guild Wars 2 you could draw on the map. I, I haven't done it in a while. So I, I see people do it in uh, the PvP uh, zone sometimes. Hmm. Hey, Mike, what's the funniest thing you've heard or thought about Guild Wars 2's races? The funniest thing? I mean... Hmm. When Rose thought that no furries could possibly be attracted to Char. That was pretty funny. Because <laughs> he got a big wake-up call. <laughs> he got a major wake-up call after that. You must prove your strength to then they invented Bangar. Yeah, I mean, he's got Bang in the name. It was all over after that. Your radial mount doesn't have a background. How? This? I don't know. Uh... Blish... Uh, mounts settings. This is how mine is set up. That's how mine is set up. Uh, oh yeah, if you're using the standalone radial mount menu and not the Blishhead radial mount menu, it's a different one. It's kind of like Coke vs. Pepsi. It's made by different people. So it might look slightly different if that's what you're doing. Wizards Vault Rewards. Ah! Mm-hmm. Alright, that one's done. Uh, is that one? That guy's just in the aerodrome. Okay. Hmm. I'll log into this character and then I'll look at the Wizard's Vault thing. Okay. What do we got? No, it's full again. Uh, hmm. Hmm. All right, there we go. Got some clovers. Okay. Done. All right. Late energy matter converter. I just had someone whisper me, and they said, I am holding my own in gold too. I need a muckluck to congratulate me so I can get to plat. And I said, congrats. And he goes, YES! <laughs> in all caps. <laughs> He's very excited. Uh, hey, Muck, how are you? Can we get chip cam, please? Here's the chip cam. Currently unoccupied. <laughs> he is somewhere napping. I don't know where he's at. He's not in here at the moment. You need someone to say a few words. That's cute. Mm-hmm. And now I'll ruin their day, and I'm going to tell them I'm going to copy their fashion. <laughs> Your hat is mine. It's like Shang Tsung from Mortal Kombat. Test your might. We have completed the task at hand. Imagine if you could do it really quickly, 
Like, what if they made it easier to copy? Like, you right-click someone, and there was just a copy fashion. <laughs> Imagine, like, you're having an argument with someone, and you have some dumb take. You're like, I don't think it works that way. And their character just changes and looks like you, and you're like, I don't think it works that way. <laughs> and they just, like, mock you to your face. <laughs> and you're just like, wow, the audacity. <laughs> <laughs> Someone should make a mod that- Yo, what if that was one? What if that was one? <laughs> just new Blish HUD module. Copy, paste, target. It, it, and it sends a whisper. It's like getting copied, scrub. Uh, We need fashion safe slots to change back quickly. <laughs> just be a mimic. Sometimes even Chip refuses to sit with the crazy person who talks to himself on screen. Well, I mean, he apparently woke up at 5.30 to uh, wake my wife up, and then he proceeded to ignore her after that. <laughs> like, I I'm a deeper sleeper than my wife, most of the time. So apparently he came and, like, started meowing outside her door until she got up, and then she's like, Ah, what? And then he stopped, and then I slept through the whole thing. So, you know, he's he's catching up on his sleep after waking up early to, to bother her. Need fashion safe slots. Yeah, I've seen people ask for, like, a fashion templates. Where they could, like, change between some, diff some favorite setups or something. Uh, looking forward to new X-Fact now. I'm not a vet player, so very pleasantly surprised my guess for a new map was same as yours, Monk. Would be cool to see, uh, more character maps. Yep, 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 yep. There's, a uh... Yeah, there's a video from Wooden Potatoes where there was three... He said, uh, he had three guesses for where that place was. And his first guess was the same as mine, was which was that it looked like pre-searing Ascalon. Now, I don't know what we would be doing in pre-searing Ascalon, unless we're going go, to go back in time or something, I'm not sure, but, uh, maybe, we'll see. Now, for those that don't know, pre-searing Ascalon was, like, over here, so maybe in the, the greener area. And we'd certainly have room for maps over here. I'm like, hi, Alex. Imagine the money Anet would get for fashion slots. I mean, at least a dollar. No time travel, it complicates things to know it. It's Warlords of Draenor time, kids, get in. Why, why does pre-searing mean? All right, so Alex, in Guild Wars 1, there, when you make a new character, you're in a world where everything is nice. Like, the Char and the humans are fighting, but the world looks fine, right? It's, it's not messed up. Guys, then, look at me! I'm so curvy! Around, uh, I don't know, a few hours into the game, uh, there's a major quest moment. And if you accept that quest and you do it, you see a cutscene of an event called The Searing. And The Searing was basically like the Char set, it fired off a magical nuke over here. And it killed a, a ton of human people, which is why there's ghosts all over the place over here now in Guild Wars 2. Alright? Now, after the searing, it's kind of like a, a time skip, you know, in a movie, where your when you get control of your character again, the whole area over here is, like, dead. Like, the, the land is dead, the trees are dead, it, like, it's just all messed up. It's, like, post-nuclear. And you cannot go back to the pre-searing area. So there's, like, of these zones, there's the pre-searing versions of those zones, and there's the post-searing versions of those stones, zones. And then post-searing, the story continues and goes on. So I'd say like 90% of the game is post-searing. So, you know, and then you, you, you go to like Lion's Arch and you go over here, you go all over the place um, in the post-searing area. So pre-searing is kind of like the newbie zone of Guild Wars 2, uh, Guild Wars 1. Um, but in Guild Wars 1, the area over there is all like lush and vibrant and full of life. And, and the post-searing is like a nuke just fired off. Oppenheimer was a char. Yeah. So, that that's basically what it is. Uh, there is a few interesting things. For example, it's 
not impossible, but it is challenging to level up past like level 10 in pre-searing in Guild Wars 1. And there is an achievement for getting to max level in just pre-searing. Like never, basically never leaving the newbie zone and just going all the way to max level. Um, so there, there's, a, there's a few interesting things with it. But yeah, it's a, leaving the pre-searing is a one-way trip uh, on a character. If you want to go back, you have to make a new character. Um, I once imagined a fractal where we could defeat Abaddon, Recreation of Nightfall. Post-Searing made it into a Fallout area. Is there any maps of Guild Wars 1 that haven't been added to Guild Wars 2 yet? I'm sure there are. I remember at one point, um, that Shaman did an overlay of Guild Wars 1 over Guild Wars 2, and you could see what had it. Let me see if I can find it. Hang on. Uh, that Shaman Guild Wars 1 and Guild Wars 2 overlay. Uh, Guild Wars 1 map overlaid on Guild Wars 2. So I think I might have found it. Oh, beauty. Okay, yeah, I found it real quick. Um... Wow, yeah, this is a big image. All right, so I've got this picture here. All right, so this, the color is Guild Wars 2. The white squares are Guild Wars 1 maps. So you can see all kinds of stuff here. Twin Serpent Lakes, Stingray Strand, uh, Sanctum K, Kessex Peak. Uh, Tomorrow Wilderness, Black Curtain, Divinity Coast, like, there's a lot here. Gates of Kratos, like, you know, Lion's Arch is pretty much in the same place, because Lion's Arch survived, or got rebuilt, you know. Uh, over in the mountains, and so they go down to here. Yeah, so there was nothing in, like, the ore area of Guild Wars 1. There was some stuff on the Fire Islands. Uh, they never made it down to Ratasun. And down here, I think, is where Nightfall took place. Yeah. Yep. I'll link this image in the chat. Uh, post searing made into Fallout. Garrosh and the Chars was in the same Siege School, I guess. Is it worth getting into Guild Wars 1? Um... I would say, well, first of all, it's dirt cheap. It's a few dollars. But Guild Wars 1 is a very different game from Guild Wars 2. Could you, like, load it up and enjoy it? Absolutely. I personally liked it a little. I did not like it as much as Guild Wars 2. There will be some people that love Guild Wars 1 and hate Guild Wars 2, or vice versa. And then there's some people that like both. But it is a very different type of game. So, I would say it's it's dirt cheap if you want to get into it and play it. Uh, I died when I was level 16, pre-searing. Been in Guild Wars 1 last couple weeks. I'm not sure if it's pre-searing, but we'll see when x back is out. Uh, hey, my guy, chat. Hey, Bobby. Think of Guild Wars 1 like a co-op RPG, not an MMO. Yes. Uh, Guild Wars 1 is more like Dragon Age Origins. Mmm. <laughs> I I understand your comparison. I don't a hundred percent agree, but I understand it. How long till the SAB event starts? If they do it at usual patch time, it'll be like in ninety minutes. Uh, it's a more complex game than Guild Wars Two when you build a character. Um, yeah, in Guild Wars One, you know, like okay, when you like pick these skills in Guild Wars One, there's hundreds. <laughs> there's now many of them are crap, but there are hundreds to choose from, not you know like twenty. So, Guild Wars 1 does have a, a massive amount of uh, build customization, just because there's a, ma a massive amount of skills to choose from. Honestly, I really didn't enjoy the gameplay in Guild Wars 1 after you get to the point where you're grouping with heroes. Um, I understand why they made them. They did it so that when, as the player base of Guild Wars 1 dwindled, you could hire hero NPCs, and then you could still do the group content even when uh, other people weren't there to group with. But after that, it was just like, you know, I, I went from playing a game where I felt like it was me controlling my character to I was playing a game where I had to control and micromanage the whole party, which is fine, but that's a different type of game to me. 
right? Yeah, that's like Dragon Age Origins, to use the quote someone said a few minutes ago. Like, I went from playing a single, like, an RPG where I control just one person to a party composition game where I have to control everyone and micromanage all these things. And at that point, that was when I lost interest in it. I did not like having to, you know, mess with all the heroes. Uh, they give you friends to party to uh, to party and play with. Uh, if you mean the henchmen, the henchmen were just worse heroes, and the henchmen were fine for the low level stuff, but at high level stuff, they they couldn't they didn't cut it much. There was also some uh, what was it? There was a period of time where like the monks went on strike or something. There was some content in the game. There was a bottleneck, and. The only way you could do it is if you had a good monk healer. And then a bunch of the monk, like the monk player base, like refused to participate because there was something they were mad about. I don't even remember what. And then it was soon after that they introduced heroes so that you didn't have to group of monk players anymore. Because all the healers were on strike. There is a, like, instead of accepting their demands, they just brought in AI monks. That's basically it. Uh, FF11 is something similar nowadays. Turns everyone to a summoner and summon NPCs to party for you. That's why I created a monk in faction, so it's easier to find a party for co-op. Heal gatekeeping, yep. It's kind of like Josh Tribe Hayes' video where he's like, you know, in uh, anime, the healer's always like, Oh, I hope I do good enough. But in MMOs, the healer's like, you know, Tank, if you do not stop your ridiculous pace, I will let you die. <laughs> <laughs> I will let you die. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's hop on this one. The Henchman and Guild Wars got so much better in Nightfall. Nightfall is actually the only Guild Wars 1 content that I never played. So, I like, I know about the Dervish and stuff, but I never played Nightfall. <clears throat> You can outfit your heroes with weapons and armor well in the first uh, Guild Wars. Time for Lack Mac DPS today. Actually, yes. Actually, yes. All right. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, recently I did a video series where I tried every single defensive support in the game. And it was fun, and I learned a lot. Uh, I don't think my favorite has changed, but there was a few that I liked way more than I thought I would, such as uh, Chrono. And uh, heal warrior, except for the warrior part. Um, those are pretty cool. After doing that, a bunch of people were like, a lot of people were like, hey, can you do the offensive supports now? And I thought about it and I decided yes. So last week, I, they're currently in the Nox box queue, but I tested and gave my thoughts on, uh, was it Quick Deadeye and a Lack Spectre? and Quick Scrapper. Which means we need to do the other engineer one today. So we're gonna go into the lobby and we're going to learn a lack DPS mech and see how it feels. Now, I'm no stranger to mech. I, that was kind of my main for like uh, the, all of End of Dragons. But I have not specifically played that build. So we're going to see how this goes and see how it feels. Like for example, of the ones I've done so far, Quick Deadeye and uh, Alak Spectre were both fine. Uh, they were fine. They did damage. They were easy to learn. Their utility is pretty crap. DPS Scrapper did a little bit less damage than them, but had so much more utility. Like, it had Function Gyro to revive people who die. It could save people. You know, it had Boon Removal. It supplied 25 Might in addition to the uh, the Quickness Boon. Uh, it had tons of CC and movement. And it just, it, it, had, a, it had a lot going for it. Um, so, like, you know, currently, just among the three I've tested, you know, the Thieves do a little bit more damage, but then they just felt like they bring, like, nothing else to the table. All right. A lack mech. Let's see what some of the finest nerds in the business do for this. I'm gonna open up Snow Crows, and let's see where is Engineer Dead Eyes Utility. None that I found. Um, power scrap. Wait, is it Condi? Is it Condi? A lack mech. 
I see Condi Alak Mech. Power Alak Mech is in Legacy. Why? All right, hold on a sec. Let me look at this. So Power Alak Mech is probably easier to play. But let me look at what's in here. 26,000 damage. Which means I'll probably do like 15. All right. Condi Alak Mech. It's probably... Yeah, God, it's friggin' three kits. So you juggle four weapons. <sighs> All right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Actually, the rotations, well, the rotation's pretty short. Sword pistol power's okay. Hmm. Snowgrows hates power like mech. It's uh, mid tier, not bottom, like they claim. I don't know if they're saying it's bottom tier. It just says legacy. I don't. I don't know what that means. Um. All right, let's try this out. Let's see here. Customize. Rit. What's the rune? Trapper. Thrips. All right. Is it writ everything? Yeah, it's writ everything. Good morning everything. slash afternoon at Mucklock and chat. Hello. Held on to this for a few days for mutiny, but alas, there was no RB last night. Mukluklil Mucklock dancing. Hey, Jinxie. Yeah, I let chat vote on what game they wanted to see last night after we finished Vermintide, and they picked Helldivers. So I went into Helldivers, and I, I embarrassed myself because I hadn't played it in like a week, and I was rusty on the um, the stratagem commands, and I died a couple times because of it. Uh, thank you, Jinxie. Welcome back. All right, Relic of the Fractal. Uh, two pistols. Ooh, do I have two pistols? Uh, no. I don't. I don't have a legendary pistol, and I don't have a backup pistol either. Hmm. Let me see. Where's the bank? Where's the bank? Where's the bank? Uh, that's the bank. Mug needs two legendary pistols. No, no, no. Hang on, hang on. All right, so all this here is ascended stuff. What have we got? Drakkar's Horde probably has one. Ebon Main's weapon. What stats is Ebon Main? Apothecary. Ascended armor, ascended armor, ascended armor, ascended armor. Armor, 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 armor. Cavalier armor. Armor to Quaddle's Horde. Armor, armor. Valkyrie armor, armor. Cleric. Magi, Sentinel, Cavalier. Okay. I think the only chance is these. Revolver. Alright. Uh, that's one. Okay. And then... Uh... That's a rifle. Wait, where is it? Is there a pistol in this? Oh, there it is. Revolver of the Sunless. What does this look like, anyway? Let's see. Why is it all smoky? Alright. Boop, boop. Alright, can I put Viper on these? Precision, Toughness, Condi damage. That's close enough. Alright. Vip. Okay. All right. Uh, I think this should be close enough for this. Let's see. Revolver and revolver and unequipped juggernaut. Customize. All right. Earth and bursting. You can do mace pistol, less uh, less damage, but more boons than CC. Mace provides regen and vigor. 
Regen, for those who don't know, if a DPS provides regen, it will get overwritten by someone who has a regen with higher healing power. So if you have a healer with you and you're doing regen, it's just going to be, get uh, you replaced by theirs. So that you can almost just ignore that. Uh, you'd be doing vigor, but I don't know that it would be worse uh, worth you know weakening yourself just for vigor on the party. Um. Can we give them nail guns? There we go. Now we can fire nails at people. Okay, we've got pistols. Easy. Food buff. Yes, uh, at this point, I, my eyes just glaze over and I just eat birthday cake. Okay. Let's see. What is the build? We got mechanists, of course. We got firearms and explosives. Okay. Bing, bing, bing. Bing, bang, bang. Bang, bang, bang. Okay. And that. And. Let's see. Grenades and bomb kits and flamethrower. No shift signet? What would they swap? If they want shift signet, what would they swap? Do it without kits and make an LI build. Uh, that's not the point of this video. I've already got an LI uh, build for this. Mm. Meg priority list. Besides your own rotation, you also have to manage the mech skills. Use them off cooldown in the following order. Crisis sound barrier burst explosive knuckle. Uh, overclock signet. Okay. All right. So, let's try this out. Let's see. Golem spawner. Spawn a golem. Average. Average. Spawn. I feel like we need to figure out which of these kits is bringing the least amount of helpful stuff and swap it for shift signet. So, shift signet copies your boons to your mech. And you want him to have, like, alacrity and quickness and stuff. Alright, what's the priorities here? Poison dart volley... Uh, bomb kit, they want you to use firebomb, which is the two, and concussive, which is the three. So two and three. Flamethrower, they want you to use napalm and flame blast. So four and five. Um, grenade kit, they want you to use shrapnel, poison, and freeze. Two, four, five. I'll see you later. Don't enjoy watching build testing. <laughs> you don't have to announce that. <laughs> That's fine. See you later. Uh, if you only need to swap a kit for the signet, you get rid of flamethrower. I'll do that to start with. All right. So hold on. So recap: grenade two, four, five, bomb kit two, three. Okay. Uh, all right. While waiting on Poison Dart Volley, fill with a uh, pistol auto. Really? They're, we're not using Blowtorch at all? Nowhere on this does it say to ever use Blowtorch. You don't need that signet because the mech gets the boons on itself plus five targets. Uh, what? No, other people's boons. When other people provide boons, they hit five targets. They will never hit a pet if they have, all the players are in range. Muck wasn't mortar kit in it? No, it was not.
So, without like other people's boons right now. We're doing like 14k. It feels so weird, uh, just like burning the F2 and F3 for alacrity as someone who plays heal mech sometimes. Feels very odd. Don't forget Elite, elite Signet. Uh, it's, it's not in the rotation. I assumed I was saving it for if my mech died. Okay. Uh, let's see. Rise on, Orga Clock. Oh, wait, no, I apologize. They've got it listed under mech priority list. When all mech skills are on cooldown, use overclock if it's available. There's a note way down at the bottom. Elite Signet and Pistol 3 are both in the rotation. What? Oh, I see what they did. Dude, they, they, whoever writes these is so strange. Like, like they say, like, like, look, they've got static written here. Like, here's the rotation, rule one through five. But they've got static up here before it, so it's not in the steps. It's just, uh, this is weirdly written. Okay. All right. Uh, let's add Boons and Condies into this and see what happens. What app are you using there? Uh, I'm not using any app. What do you mean? Adjust settings, condies, let's do all of them. Okay. All right, adjust self, booms. I don't think I'm using anything where like I get a buff for every boon or anything. All right. Uh, offense, might, 25. Fury, defense, prots, uh, quickness, regen, swiftness. That's normal. The build thing you just showed. Oh, it's a it's a website. Uh, it's this. Are you trying a power with sword pistol after? It's way better. Apparently, it does eight thousand DPS less. All right. Oh, mistook there. Small mistake. Alright. Barely reaching... 
23k right now. Doing the three kit juggle. All right. Uh, Alak is staying up. We got 13 seconds on it right now. We're reaching 23k. All right. So let's do remove, respawn. And let's try the other one. Let's do builds. Um, let's see, let's open a new tab here so that I don't close this one. Let's see, I've closed the Guild Wars 1 map, so I don't need those e uh, open anymore. Okay. Power Alak Mechanist. Is this the one with sword? No, this is with rifle. So Snowcrows doesn't even have... A lot of people are saying do sword power. Uh, Snowcrows doesn't even have that. All right. Let's check Guild Jen. Let's see if she's got it. Um... I can't search by engineer. You want a much easier power build to get over 25k without food, I can give you the build. I'm trying to find it on website. Power Mac DPS, Condi Mac DPS. Is there an Alac version here? Alacrity variant. Oh, there is, yeah. There you go. Um, but this one is also rifle. When will the new patch go live? Patch time is usually one hour from now. Mr. Mystic has a sword pistol. Send me a link to it. Or I'll try it. I'll see if I can find it. YouTube, Mr. Mystic, Engineer. First thing that came up was not the right video. Search his channel for the word engineer. Power mechanist. Power alack mechanist. Here we go. This is the guy that never talks, right? Yeah, he just blasts music, so we can just mute this. Um... Where's the gear? Okay. Alright. <sighs> Let me try this. Alright, change gear to Berserkers, uh, Trinkets, Diviners, Runes, Dragon Hunter Runes. Alright, apply to all. Trinkets, diviners, weapon, sword, and pistol. Uh, let's go equipment, and bolts. Mm, I need a pistol, oh my god. So I just used my last two Ascended Pistols, and now neither of them are Berserker now. Um, pretty sure Healer's Pistol is not going to have the right stats. I can do Celestial. That's fine for this test. All right. Force and Air Sigils. And I'll do Force on this. Oh, it doesn't have the stats yet. Burrs. Force. Okay, force and air. Uh, relic, he's using Relic of the Thief. Let's see how that feels. Uh, food, don't care. All right, go over here, right across the middle. Do that and do that. Okay. And... He doesn't have the skills on the build page, so I gotta back up a little bit. 
All right, here we go. So throw mine. What is this? Force signet, shift signet, and overclock. Okay. Spam sword two, sword three, pistol four, and pistol five. Pistol five is glue. Use mines and elite when up. Give a lack by using a mech F2 and F3. Prioritize F2 and F3, give a lack first. Avoid using your elite if your mech is using its F3. That's it? Okay. Um, anything else? Glue has excellent power damage. You know, I forgot they, they scaled that. It was like in the last month that they buffed glue damage. Okay. Do I still have the boons? Yes, I still have the boons. All right. Dude, hold on. I, I need a reminder of how uh, sword works. Strike a foes in front of you and you only launch two blades of light at your target. Okay. Uh, leave to your target and create an arc of light that strikes nearby foes. Okay. All right. Am I using Force Signet or just letting it sit there passively? Well, we're doing 26k, which was more than the three-weapon Condi version that we did. And this is a lot easier to play, because I don't even have to weapon swap on this one. Do I have something occasionally decreasing my cooldowns? I feel like I occasionally see something drop, jump from like two seconds remaining to just ready. Oh, the auto chain does it? Okay, I have so little experience with Engineer Sword. Engineer Sword, for the longest time that I played this, was attached to Hollow, and I hate Hollow. Like, I hate playing Hollow. I, like, they're fine in parties. Uh, but, so, I haven't played the sword, like, at all. Um, recharge your other sword skills by one second. That's what's doing it, okay. So we did 26k there, and yeah, that was definitely easier to play. Um... You can also bring a rifle for ranged encounters with about 2k loss, DPS loss. Mm. This give, build gives you 25 might fury. Wait, it does? 25 might fury and a lag. Hang on. Remove my boons. Add quickness only. Respawn Golem. Is this a lack or DPS? This is a lack DPS.
I'm not seeing 25 might. Uh, it's, it's tw there's like 20. I'm not seeing 25. Honestly, it's close enough that it would uh, it would cap with somebody else providing just a little bit. We just dropped 14 there. The fury is always there. That's a surprise. I didn't realize it gave full fury. So it gives fury and a lack and a lot of might is what I would say, and then gives some prot stability and aegis but you're just slamming this every time it lights up so there's no guarantee that you'll have those things when you need them uh all right hmm i guess between the two i'd stay with this one hmm And a few folks said that you could bring a rifle instead and give up like 2k more DPS to get ranged. And at that point, you'd be about down to the damage of the Condi variant. So you could just choose, do you want to be Condi or a power with it? Build so simple, you could eat lunch with one hand, work with another, and pug raids with the last one. <sighs> uh, since I just joined like 10 minutes ago, what are we testing? Learning another support DPS build. Which, in this case, we were looking at Mechanist. However, uh, a lack mech builds uh, were retired on Snowcrows because they didn't think they were good. So I tried a few from other websites. Uh, the power, this sword power mech one, felt like it did more damage and was easier to learn than the Condi one, which was juggling three kits. So we're here now. Let me see. Mm. Seeing what sword fashion game I've got right now, chat. Hmm. The toy one, obviously. Oh, Chainsword. I like Chainsword. Alright. And Nail Gun for the other hand. Okay. Alright. Uh, so, at a glance, though, looking at this, comparing this to the other stuff that I tried recently, to me, this is like... I, I would file this under the same column as Deadeye or uh, the Spectre that I did. This seems very easy to learn and capable of doing a respectable amount of damage and providing the boon it's in charge of. Outside of that, I'm not seeing a lot of utility. It has some CC, and yeah, it gives a stability on occasion at random moments. And same with a Aegis. It gives a stability and an Aegis at random moments, but they're part of the rotation, so they're never going to be just like exactly when you need them, unless they just happen to be. Uh, is it fun? Uh, I mean, that's going to depend on the uh, the end user, right? But, in any case, like all of them, I need to try these out in some actual content. So let me go to the Wizard's Tower. Try not burning Mech 2 on cooldown. I think in order to not burn the Mech F2 on cooldown, I would need to have Barrier Signet on the bar to make up for the loss. Because without using the Mech F2 on cooldown, um you're going to have uh, problems keeping the Alak up. You can switch to any kit. Mm. Is there any mention of that in this guide? What would you swap for a kit if you wanted a kit? I'm guessing the mine or the force signet? I'm just skimming through that video right now.
It does have Shift Signet as a emergency teleport. That's nice to have. Like, there's a lot of builds I've played recently that did not have a uh, you know, get out of jail free button. Mm, let's see. Kick. This stuff's Diviner, right? Yeah. Trinkets are Diviner, Armor's Berserker, Weapon's Berserker, except for one weapon, which is Celestial, because I didn't have a Berserker pistol. Can you share the build? Uh, I copied the build from that, Hib. Guess you don't have much support from the mech, so it benefits from the shared boons. Okay, Fall never answered my question about the kit thing. Alright, let's try this out in some actual fights. Uh, I am on EU at the moment. For anyone who might be interested in joining me, I'm gonna do the daily strike missions to start with. Maybe raids after, we'll see. There's links to the squad join command if anybody wants to join me. Uh, you should have enough passive lag generation that you can hold F2 for several seconds when you want to save it for mechanic. Just use it at the start of a fight for a buffer and don't hold it for crazy long. Right. How do I join? I just posted instructions in the chat just a second ago. We've got three slots remaining. Oh, you're on EU. Every time. Uh, let's see. Any healer. Yui says any healer. Yui could you swap to some quickness healer and I'll be a lack uh, DPS with you. Haven't touched Guild Wars 2 for almost a month, busy with Valheim and Helldivers. Valheim? I can understand Helldivers. Haven't heard Valheim come up in a little bit. Uh, let's see. Alright, so Aiko says heal Alak. Alright, where's Aiko? Alright, do we have a quickness DPS to go with Aiko? Uh, Ravi says that they can quick DPS. Ravi, if you could quick DPS, and then that, and, and then everything's covered. Let's see, daily strength mission is cosmic. Easy. All right. Hmm. I was trying to think, someone said you could swap out the shift signet for a kit. I know I could like, for example, put flamethrower kit and then use the vent as an extra CC or something. <clears throat> I'm not sure what other kits would help me. I mean, maybe grenade get me a little more damage or something. I'm just going to keep it on shift for simplicity's sake for now. I know this is late, but probably my first time doing the strike. I usually do raids. Oh, uh, okay, let's do this. For people that are in the squad that want it, this is not required. If you want it, I am in a channel on the Discord where only I can talk. If you want to hear me without the stream delay for the fight, I will try to tell you the mechanics as we go. So it's just, it's there if you want it. The link to the Discord's in the chats if you don't already have it. All right, I'm gonna drop DPS into the groups now. Uh, Bear Zaxer, are you on the way? 
Bear said, I've never did any strikes, so I need to unlock something. Uh, this strike is accessible from the Wizard Tower in Soto. Do you have access to the Wizard Tower, Bear? Uh, kick me if you'd rather have someone that knows what they're doing. I just need someone who knows oh, how to hey get there, you. beauty. I don't mind explaining the fight, but once again, do you have access to the Wizard Tower in Soto? I don't care if you've never been here. I just care that you can get here. Swap mine for barrier signet if you want projectile hate here. Would I swap the mine or would I swap shift signet? Don't have that, sorry. Okay, gotcha. All right. Yeah, I I don't mind at all explaining the fight, but if you can't get here, I can't help with that. But, all right. Uh, okay, then in the friendliest way possible, I'll have to swap you out. Get away from me. Okay, so with that, we've got room for one DPS. Uh, oh, then somebody just joined. Wonderful, thank you. All right, pulling you into a group. Hoping you know how to get to Cosmic Observatory. I never take shift signal off the bar, it's too good. Look at this, oops, all signals. Subbing because I got booted off the party. <laughs> Wait, if I kick people, I get subs? Oh, this is, a da this is a dangerous thought to put in my head, BTM. Dangerous thought. Thank you, buddy. Must be an honor to get the muck boot. Yo, know, when I'm on EU and I say I'm on EU and I say I'm doing strikes on EU and someone joins and goes, wait, you're on EU, I just assume they want the boot. They just, they, they want to experience that. You take my power. Just started Guild Wars 2 like two weeks ago. Oh, gotcha. Well, welcome to the community. Cheers, then. Yeah, 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 BTM, if it happens again in the future, we're totally fine explaining stuff. That's the reason I just uh, got onto Discord in voice with some people, because there were some other people that wanted um, shot calling. Uh, that didn't bother me at all. I just needed, you know, people that could get to the uh, fight. Been playing for 10 years, so just did Strikes once. To be fair, Strikes haven't been out for 10 years. Strikes were added to the game in Icebrood Saga, and they've added a, a, some since then. For me personally, they're my favorite form of content. It's usually pretty quick getting a group to do it. And it's like, get in, fight a boss, no trash or anything, and then get loot and move on. Alright. Alright, for this, if you get a target marker on your head, you need to back up behind the rest of the group and use us as a human shield. Everyone else just stands on that green line to absorb the damage. Wiggle, or if you're not sure if you have the target marker, you wiggle to see if it's you. Dodge between the pizza slices. She'll be targetable again in a second. Okay, it's on me, so I'm backing up us a little bit. Split up, and then go boom, and then come back. She's doing a blender move. Don't run in for just a second. Okay, it's over. Split up again. Now, when she does the blender move, it does projectiles, which are, you know, bullets, but then she also is spinning. So you gotta be careful, uh, even if the, you know, we use, like, projectile block, you gotta be careful not to get blundered by the spin if you're melee. Split up again. Dodge out of the middle, burn your dodges to get out of there. And then kill the adds around the outside.
Watch out, blunder. Alright, it's over. Split up. Okay, for this part, someone needs to run over... Alright, someone already did it. So that little uh, angry puddle that was on the floor, someone can run over the white sparks in the room, they get a special action key, and that kills the puddle. So now someone already handled it, so it's fine, but it's just something to keep in mind. Okay. Split up, and someone got the special action. Okay, good. Dodge out of the middle, dodge out of the middle, and then kill ads. Yo, I'm um, pleasantly impressed by the glue bo the glue gun damage chat. I haven't played NG since they buffed that. It's pretty silly damage for glue. She's spinning. Just a little step back till it's over. Okay. Uh, we got the angry puddle in the in the raid. If you get the special action, take it out. And then don't stand on it. Alright, watch out. Half the room is bad. CC her, CC her. Good. Dodge out of the middle. And then we go around the perimeter of the room, killing the ads. Blender. Get out of that red area. CC her. I like the suggestion to swap out the throw mine for the barrier signet. It's nice having control over that and just completely shutting down all her bullets whenever she does that. Uh, okay, so probably go back to throw mine now. Okay, the next one, I haven't seen what the next daily is, is going to be an arbor stone. How many diviner pieces, diviner, diviner, div, I, I, no matter how I say it, people say I say it wrong. Diviner, diviner. Uh, no matter how many divin pieces you're using, uh, how many are you using? I'm using trinkets. Uh, so the trinkets, the rings, accessories, backpack, and necklace are divin right now. And everything else is burgers. Except I've got one item. I didn't have a berserker pistol, so I'm using a celestial pistol. With a barrier signet, you can also delay your F2 even more. True, but there's really no moment on Dagda where I needed um, stability, right? All right, let's see. Daily strikes. Uh, Jade Junkyard. Does anyone know when the update will launch? Patch time is usually 30 minutes from now if they do it at the normal time. Just say it like it's from God Divine. Diviner. -er. 
Heliest. I like your name. Thank you for the Prime sub, Heal. Appreciate the support. Welcome. What's the pop-up text? Regions of Tyria, a module for Blishud. Wait. Wait. <laughs> With the 10th person hadn't even zoned in yet, guys. All right, they're moving now. Okay. <laughs> Always check the party interface. <laughs> Okay, red circles run out, go boom, and then come back. Explosive quaggins. Red areas are bad. Vacuum that will kill you. Don't get sucked. CC. Drive by suck. Oh, she did. She went vulnerable. She canceled it. Lich chasing someone. It looks like the person has already realized it and are properly kiting. Vacuum. heal scourge. He just saved those two downstates that were in the death puddle. Alright. She's phasing. use shift to get all the condies off me. I have quite a few. Are you muting yourself in Discord with some button? Uh, I do have a button for that, but my hand's nowhere near it on the keyboard? I don't think I did. Quaggins exploding. Add things.
va uh, death puddles, death puddles, and the vacuum. GG. Nice, 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 nice. All right. Uh, Ice Brood Saga next. Um, it's pretty standard jump down there in my experience and not glad to start encounter maybe EU versus NA thing. Maybe. I honestly not sure if I've ever seen a group drop down and then just wait. And usually if I see people drop, they're gliding straight into the boss. But, uh, it worked out. Uh, let's see. Accessories and trinkets are by far the best thing for the buck. I've had to go armor, find yourself doing classes. Off the top of my head, the minimum boon duration without barrier sickness is 35%. Like I missed the free legendary relic. Do you think it's worth making one? Um, it's pretty easy to just get a couple of the relics you need and carry them around and swap them out as needed. So I would say it is a quality of life thing, but I would say it's less so than almost every other legendary. So I do think it's worth making a legendary relic, but like not before any of the other things. IMO. Hmm. It's really cool seeing Mug do pew pew. I know he can, but he pretty much only ever does healing. It's it's easier. <laughs> I mean, I'm still playing a boon DPS right now. But it's basically like if you take all the things that healing usually does in this game and cross like two thirds of them off the list, you're left with a DPS. Certainly have a lot of free time to look around and call things out. Now you're muted again. The uh, other people on Discord, do you hear me fine right now? I don't see the little crossed out microphone next to my name, so I don't think it's me. I hear you fine. Okay. All right. Hashtag not my fault. I, d I have done that before. I have a, like, sometimes when I do, like, a collab with, like, Loranity or something, I'll, I have a button that mutes my Discord microphone so that I can just talk to my chat and not be blasting her chat at the same time. Uh, however, I, I was like, I'm nowhere near that button right now. So there's been times I, I misclicked and, uh, like, muted myself and they didn't hear me for a while. I used my one stability to get through that boulder. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, Hibernacula, if you click on us on the map, you can teleport to us. There's a waypoint up here that's under the pile of dots. There you go. Alright. Hmm. I wonder if it's because of this guy's model. The throw mine did not detonate automatically. I had to detonate it manually. You throw it while being inside his hitbox, it won't auto detonate. Weird. Easy enough to uh, correct, but weird. Stability is not up, otherwise I would use it at this moment. 
But I got some from a teammate. Nice. Sounds like that worked out okay. Okay. Uh, Brother Kron says, question, I haven't played Soto yet, is it good? Uh, hey Brother Kron, um, in my opinion, it's fine. Like, the, I would say I liked the features of it more than the story. Things like Weapon Master Training, where your characters can use each other's, you know, each other's elite specs weapons and stuff like that. Uh, I think the story was good. It, I don't think it was, like, exceptional. But that's, that's just me. Uh, bears. But if you like Guild Wars 2, it's more Guild Wars 2. You know, they didn't, like, break the mold or anything. So it is, it is, you know, if you like the game, it's more of what you possibly already like. I think in my mind, uh, Living World Season 4. Still, still one of the best story things in the game. Hey, Mug, can you tell me if we can delete a character without to lose the slot? I do not want to have surprise to do not experiment yet. If you have a character slot that has a character in it, and you delete that character, the slot will be empty and you can put another character there. I do not know of any situations where you delete a character and lose a character slot. I've never heard of that happening. Thanks. Sure. I'm going to hold off on the glue shot because I think it's going to teleport in a minute and it won't do the full damage. Hey Muck, hope you good. Say hi to my friend Dilu. I'm hi friend Dilu. <laughs> Thank you, Nugget. Appreciate the support. Hey, 23k. I mean honestly that's a cleaving fight, so 23k is not that impressive. <laughs> I think it was on when I did Power Quickness Deadeye. I think I did like 35k on this fight or something because you can cleave the two targets so you can do silly damage if you have cleave. Uh, hey guys, sort of a returning player. Played a long time ago. I was curious, do they still do discounts for new expansions? It seems I need some catch up to do. Hello, Baligan. Um, they, do ex they do discounts on expansions constantly. Do they do discounts on the newest expansions? Uh... Not often, because I mean, like that's their newest product, right? Like we're so later this year, the fifth expansion is going to come out, so I would expect that by then Soto will go on sale. But while Soto is like the newest product, I I don't know that it, it that it'll happen for sure. What about EOD? Has it been discounted already? Uh, I'm pretty sure we've had some sales on EOD since Soto came out. Hey Mike, I wanted to do a mech with turrets for flavor, but not sure if tools lose compensate for it. Uh, the, the problem is, putting a turret on your bar takes up that slot. And the turret does so little damage. And it's like, having almost anything else there does more damage. I And I, I'm sad to see it, because, like, you know, I played this game right when it launched, 
And at that time, turrets were very powerful. Like, every world boss, you'd have, like, a line of, of uh, rocket turrets over to the side doing, like, artillery vo volleys. It was beautiful. Uh, but they've nerfed them so much that they're not really viable right now unless you need them for some weird synergy. For example, the rifle turret gives you a tool belt skill that fires, like, a bullet from your belt. And it is, uh, like... Less than a 10 second cooldown. It's a very short cooldown, so it's used in a lot of interesting builds. Nathy, thank you for the prime. Appreciate that. Welcome. How often do you think they repeat sales, or is it random? Uh, I'd say like every few months they do. Uh, they they do sales. The wiki might have a page that shows like the history of it, but I do not know for sure right now. I played Digi Turtle a lot at the beginning. Yeah, there was a time period where if an engineer was in PvP and he was on a node with a bunch of turrets, like, that guy was like a little fortress. And they didn't like that, so they nerfed him into the ground and they kind of never brought him back. I remember playing Vanilla Yorosu and using Healing Turret as dedicated healer in a raw. I remember when, like, boons would last a, a, a long time, and if you had a engineer with, like, a Healing Turret out, people could go up to it and just go AFK and make a sandwich and come back, and they would have, like, minutes of regeneration stacked up from the turret, and then they could just go, like, adventuring, and it would be, like, you know, uh, much easier for them for a while. It'd be, like, stacking up a buff. Uh, let's see. We just did Frainer. So Whispers next. Are we getting anything besides SAB with the update? Uh, we're getting the ability to inspect people's cosmetics. That was announced yesterday. You'll be able to right-click on people and do, like... Where did, click, where did that hat come from? Things like that. Um, aside from that, I don't know what else. Controversial, bringing that up. Controversial? What? The cosmetic thing? Oh my god. Alright. We, we talked, yeah, we talked about this earlier at length. I think it's, I think that's stupid. It's not like they invented the artwork. They're just like, I put this hat with this boots and it's mine. And if other people use this combination, they're stealing my look and I will press charges. Like, yo, okay. All right, Susan, calm down. I want people to whisper me and earn my approval before they get the knowledge of where to obtain this hat. You know the meme where the guy's in the noose and the, and he's like, first time? Like, that that would be me. You'd have me in the noose, but with the wizard hat, and there'd be like 40 more people with the wizard hats off to the side. And I'd be like, first time? Because I got like 20 people running around with just absolute clones of my character. And it's just like, whatever. Nine mana? Yeah, well, nine mana. I don't know. We lost someone, I guess. I feel like there is two moods that are normal for this update. One, 
is I've been waiting for this for 10 years. And the second one is I don't care. And I think both of those are valid. I think just about anything else is silly. We need stat inspection. There are pros and cons to that. Let me focus on the fight, though. I am... I see bene uh, I see positives and negatives to having stat inspection. So I'm not firmly in the camp that's demanding that. But I am in the, if it happens, you know, I'll still be here. Holy crap, that clone just gave me like five clones. What? Uh, Alright, so boss, I'm just going to say this in case anyone here needs to hear it. This boss does a mechanic that's called chains. He will attach that, that those beams. Those do not hurt the people attached to them. But anyone else touching the beams gets ripped apart every second. So those people that have the beams need to hold still and not run around because you're going to cut other people's heads off. Also, if you stand right on top of the boss, you will get hit by every single chain. So don't do that. Do not stand, like, in his hitbox, because you'll get hit by all the chains. You're gonna have a bad time. If anyone didn't know, you can, uh, why did that go under my feet? I had him targeted. Um, you can completely dodge that damage from the falling icicles. You just gotta, you split up to avoid other people and then dodge roll your own circle. I'm excited to steal your fashion, Buck. <laughs> All right, this is when we want stability, and I actually have it available. There we go. And you see the group that didn't have stability went flying. I'm lucky my cooldown's lined up for that one. So we split up, and then dodge roll, and we take no damage. Oh no, I'm trying to save this fella. Dodge away, dodge away. Uh, the Necro Worm kill box. GG. Bunch of mucklucks and mislocks. Thanks for being cool to watch. I have a picture on my Twitter of three mucklucks all pointing at each other, and it's like the Spider Man meme. I'd have to dig for it, but I have basically seen that. How does Necro Worm work? Uh, okay. Uh, here, little little lesson for you. All right. So, boss is right here in the middle of the room, right? When he is in the final phase, he gains an ability where there's like arrows coming out from underneath him, and then he fires those orbs in all directions. Just think of them like bullets, all right? So bullets are flying in all directions. When a bullet hits someone, it explodes and does damage around that person. If you put a pet, like a f summon flesh worm from a necro, in the dead center of his hitbox, when the bullets appear, they immediately explode on contact with the worm. So that has two effects. Effect number one, the whole room is cleaned up. There's not bullets flying everywhere. But effect number two, there is 3,000 explosions per second happening in the dead center of the room. Because all the bullets are blowing up as soon as they spawn. So if you are too close to the boss, you get absolutely ripped apart by the multitude of explosions happening every second right in the dead center. So it's a great strategy as long as everyone understands what's happening. 
And what they need to understand is just do not stand in the dead center of the room or you will be riddled with explosions. Uh, let's see. Uh, bone skitter. Uh, yeah, we, I mean, we're at, we're near the end, but we're at Bone Skinner if, uh, someone in chat wants to just join. If not, we'll just nine minute. Assuming everyone can step left. Don't projectile block on this fight. You know what? I I will. I'll bring barrier signal on this one just to help block the bullets. Since when does Axe 5 reflect projectiles? Since always. I actually don't remember a time that it didn't reflect projectiles. Yeah, we're talking about Ranger Axe 5, if that wasn't clear. Good Spectral Grasp, I love it. here with us for the, the babbles. Oh my, a lot of people ate that. GG. Okay. We didn't even eat damage. I mean, some of y'all got basically teabagged by Bone Skinner. <laughs> he landed right on you. <laughs> uh, let's see, we did 21k on Bone Skinner while running Barrier Signet. It's not bad. So while, while being a Boon DPS, 21k while running Barrier Signet instead of Throw Mine. So we sacrificed damage to block more projectiles. The inventory space? Oh, look at that. Look at that. Let's go. Oh, dude, it's crazy, dude. I got I got so much room in my bag that like I fit in my bag. Look at this. Look at that. You could fit so many mucklucks in here. This is crazy. Look at all of this space. It's crazy. Oh my god, dude. Get you some thick baggy waggies, chat. You could carry around like four hundred mucklucks. I am compact for your traveling convenience. I also fit in most overhead storage bins. <laughs> T 
To be honest, Barrier Signet is better than Superconducting Signet. That's great. I spend more time in the Merchant or Trading Post than anything else, I feel like. Shut up and take my money. <laughs> 400 Muck Luck sounds great and terrifying at the same time. It would be an incredible world boss fight. Uh, let's see. Let's pull, pull the group. Let's pull the group here. Uh, squad. Want to do wing four, question mark. So wing four is the easiest bosses, in my opinion. Look, I've got data. Easy Ooh. money, easy clovers and uh, ascended items, stuff like that. All right. Okay. So, so, okay, so let's head toward the aerodrome then. It looks like it's mostly positive. And do both groups still have all the boons? I think we just lost a pure DPS, so I may need a replacement DPS. Do you have any guides on how to acquire those large bags? I do. I do. Look at this. My baggies. Hold on. Oh, these. My baggies. My massive mucking satchels. My super stuffed pouches. My honker bonker baggy waggies. My canvas stretching loot containing gravity welling loot bags. You mean these super duper ultra hyper god dang 32 slot mucking bags? You click this link because you want some big girthy bags. If uh, uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, watch that. Watch that. Click that link. Get you some of that. Put that man's brain in a jar. I don't know, but the answer is most certainly around us somewhere. I need the location add-on. Regions of Tyria. It's a Blishhood module. What do you think? What do you think about Berserker on Overwatch? I don't see many people in game. Why? What? Oh, open world. What do I think about Berserker and open world? It's fine. It's. Uh, wait, what? What is embolden? What is this? Oh, it's like oh, it's like baby training mode. Oh no, I, I'm I'm voting to turn that off. I don't need that. It's the opposite of CM. No, we no, we don't we don't need embolden. That's gonna diminish our victories. Deactivate it. I won't be able to sleep at night if I do embolden. Unbold me. I'm I only raid in italics. Lead the way. What was the question? I, uh, Fenru says I don't see many people in game. I think you. I, I'm not sure where you're at. Uh, the, the world is very big, but there is absolutely a lot of life in the game. All right, basic strat. If you are not hit with agony, go to the heart. If you have agony, go to any other marker. You'll still be in range of the healers if you do that, okay? Basic stuff. I'm gonna slightly correct these positions. There we go. There's one Agony in the group. Just go to one of the other markers and you'll still be in heal range. Okay, stability if you got it. New Agony, go to the blue square or the green star. There's a new Agony. Wiggle to see if it's you. There you go. New build available. But I'm fighting Cairn! Mm. 
wasn't close at all, chat. But it's SAB. I I don't care. Like, I like, look, a hot take here. I'm gonna be honest. I enjoy the skins that come from SAB. I don't enjoy SAB. We got Agony in the raid. Aiko, go to one of the other Lucky Charms, please. Anyone who doesn't have Agony, come near the heart. Oh no, he dodged my flamethrower with that. Sad flamethrower noises. Wish I had function gyros right now, I could save that guy. <laughs> GG! New viewer here, apparently my wife just saw you in EU, I thought you were typically on NA. Yes! Yes, your wife only saw me from a distance, and that was the, the entirety of our interaction. Yes, I do usually live on NA. On uh, morning streams, I transfer to EU and hang out with the people across the pond. Well, I say morning stream. Morning for me, because it's uh, earlier over here. Yes, I live on the east coast of the U.S. Do you want to try Overseer CM? Oh my god, it's been so long. What was that one? Oh, that's the one where you stand in like the, the blue tiles or whatever, right? I trust Alexander. He's going to get that shovel and he's going to do a great job. I'm going to wait here. Any ETA on SAB? I think it just came out. There was a um, pop-up a second ago that said that there was a new build available. All right. Lead the way. Blue tiles, tick faster, green tiles. Yeah, I, I've killed Mercedes over to CM before. It's just been a long time. Of course we have to fight the dead body. I pug a lot, so I don't often play with people that are entirely competent. <laughs> so I don't do CMs much. <laughs> The shock on her face was priceless, though. It's good. I'm, I'm glad she remembers me. <laughs> this conversation reminds me of a thing I saw once, where is this was on a, a subreddit for Factorio chat, and uh, Sab has the most unique festival content. Other festivals are more like seasonal gold farms. Uh, there was a, a subreddit for Factorio, and this guy posted that he's like, I play so much Factorio that my wife calls Factorio the other woman. And the top reply was, does your wife know that she's the other woman? <laughs> Factorio is your bride now. Okay, do we have any volunteers for the jobs before I step up to do something? Mike, do you take noobs into your strike runs? Uh, yeah, I took two today. Now, I will say it's appreciated if they're willing to watch the Get to the Point videos I worked so hard on that will show you the whole fight and teach it to you in like 30 seconds. But, yeah, I'll, I'll still take them as long as they just get on voice with me so I can explain what to do.
Spikes, watch out. I just suddenly remembered Laura. Ah, continuum split! And then just dead. Spikes, Hulk out. Spikes. I'm not busy doing anything. Uh, decline. I don't know that number. Wow. I'm down, Stu. Spikes. So, I... Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Scared me. He went untargetable. I think what happened there was both of the adds died at the same time, and when the adds died, they emitted an explosion, and we weren't, like, completely full health, and the protect user did not use the protect bubble, so we all just went and just took a massive truckload of damage. Does that sound accurate, group? I think that's what happened. Um, 22k on that one. Do we have any steely boys? We do not have steely boys. We gotta we gotta dig through rocks. You can dodge the explosion and knock take damage. Can you? Is that one dodgeable? If so, you may have taught me something there. <sighs> RTPS still working after patch. I haven't relaunched my game yet, so I'll find out if Arc is gonna break soon. A lack TPS mech? Yeah, I'm learning a lack TPS mech today. Doing at least one more boss. Deimos always depends on whether the pug has hand kiters or not. We'll see. Very surprised Delta Connected isn't on skiing holidays. Dude, I swear that guy, like he's a pillar of the Guild Wars 2 community, but I swear he looks at when he thinks updates are and schedules vacations based on that. <laughs> I feel like every time Ark breaks, he's on vacation. Also, he has to be European. This is, this is, I'm saying this as an observation, not as any form of insult. Y'all have a lot of freaking holidays, okay? Like, as I be, uh, you know, get, in the business I'm in, I talk to people in various countries constantly for, like, games and stuff. And I will tell you that I feel like every week or two, I get a message from my EU contacts, and they're like, hey, just letting you know, I won't be in the office on uh, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday through Friday because it's, uh, you know, it's National Finding Nemo Day. And I'm just like, uh, okay. okay. <laughs> it's like every two weeks, there's something like, like uh, oh, in remembrance of this tree that fell over or something. It's crazy. Like, there's so many. Pressing auto walk, not a good idea. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I, I died during that cutscene. I don't usually die during that cutscene. Alright, so chat, what I'm thinking here is I'm going to... Hmm. Maybe I'll just not use throw mine ex if he's about to stomp So I was about to take battering ram, but I don't think that's necessary. Throw mine does almost as much CC break. I want to try saving the throw mine for when it's CC time and see how that goes. Americans have a culture of overworking. Uh, I don't think that's related to the holiday thing, but you are right, and I'm not proud of it. I, I especially love the thing where your, your boss is like, hey, if you get sick, I don't want you to come into work, because then you'll just make everybody else sick. And it's like, okay. And then you call in one day and you're like, hey, I don't, I don't, I, I don't feel good, I'm sick. And your boss is like, how sick? Oh, 
that's out there. CC! Beauty. CC. Yeah, this is working fun. Keeping throw mine instead of battering ram is nearly the same CC, but way more damage. Okay. Ooh, we didn't ask about knockbacks. Y'all got knockbacks? Did anyone bring knockbacks? <laughs> I'm supposed to ask that before we start the fight. Y'all got any of them knockbacks? Uh, if anyone has knockbacks, we need to push Rigum into the boss. Like, pin the tail on the donkey. Nice, and just keep doing that every time you can. Oh, I like that. The Necro feared him into the boss. Tricky, tricky, tricky. We need to keep doing it. It will do a check at full health 66 and 33 of whether or not Rigam is there. Otherwise, Goldhelm goes invulnerable again. Maybe I should have brought the battering ram, I would have had a knockback. <laughs> the fear strat, I like it. It's working! If it means we don't have to wipe it, I like it too. Friends mechanic. Chat, I'm testing something. Can one glue gun. Kill some spears. That's the test. The answer is no. It gets their break bar down to like a third. Not quite. Friends mechanic. Two glue guns can kill a, a pile of spears. Friends mechanic. Bring the power signet if CC is necessary. I have it on the bar. I just didn't feel that it was uh, necessary to reduce my damage because the group is doing a great job of CC. Like, my finger's on the button, but it just wasn't needed there. What? Did no break? What? Throw Mind does 200 Defiance Bar. Weird. Throw Mind does not damage the Defiance Bar of Spears. But it's supposed to do 200 Break Bar damage. That's gotta be a bug. That Spear clearly stepped on that Mind. Muck playing Unga Bunga, not support. I mean... You gotta do what you gotta do. My mech's over there giving alacrity to Samurogs. Idiot, come back. Yeah, I'm doing a tour of uh, DPS supports. And right now, it's a lack mech. One more fear. I believe in you, spooky boys.
All right, I think you got it. He's dropping. Friends mechanic. CC. Look at that beautiful CC. So juicy. Don't don't even have to burn the signets. CC. I will do the signet this time. Y'all scaring me. That's it. I'm out. Good luck, that guy. Friends mechanic. GG. Nice job. Not even close. Healer's Axe of the Unseen. Mm -hmm. I think I got any Ascended stuff this time. Okay, to the party. We could stop here, or if we have a hand kiter and a tank, we could do Deimos. Now, normally, I'd be completely jumping to tank, but that's, you know, against the whole point of why I'm doing this today. So, I'm not going to do that. So, do we have those things? <clears throat> no response yet on hand kiter. One person said they can tank. Do we have hand kiter? I can hand kite as chrono, but it's kind of scuffed. <laughs> I mean, do you want to try it? <laughs> what do you need to do again as hand kiter? You need, a f you need a special set of gear and a special build for hand kiting. It's not something we can just teach you here right now. But the, this, the, the simple version of it is this. He has an attack he constantly does on the farthest away person that people call hands. It looks like hands come out of the ground like they're reaching up from hell or something and then they tickle you. And it does a ton of damage. So you need to be able to stand very far away from the party and take tons of damage. And not, oh my god, okay, we're starting. And not die of boredom. That's it, that's hand kiting. Uh, I guess I'll stay out here and kill Brads. Blue gun is good for Prides, chat. Who knew? I got feared and killed. Oh my god. Well, GG! Oh, you started it when you weren't, we weren't ready, and then you ended it when we weren't ready. Did not commit the crime of inspecting someone's fashion? Cezonix, I have commissioned someone to make me an add-on where I can right-click on someone's name and click copy fashion, and it will just take all of their stuff and put it on me. So whenever someone is talking to me and they're like, you know, I don't want somebody to copy my fashion, I could just like, and turn into them and be like, I don't want somebody to copy my fashion. I can just mock them right to their face. I have another hotkey that puts the wizard hat back on, though. Or imagine I transform into them, and then I can be like, I can see why. Man, this is ugly AF. <laughs> I heard people are mad about the fashion inspection, but I don't know why. Honestly, I'm kind of happy for him. 
Because if that is the worst thing going on in their lives, they're probably living a really good life. <laughs> we should all be envious of people who have time to be envious about inspect fashion. Because they are living the good life. Waiting on Tashandra. Oh no, I've got the green. I'm holding still. Make your decisions. I love the music for Demos Shot. Oh god, me again? You are a mechanist with a sword? Yes. I'm very skilled. I'm a master of what pounds? Secrets of the Obscure added a feature called Weapon Master Training that lets you use the special weapons of your different elite specs on different uh, elite specs. Sword mech isn't real. He can't hurt you. Sword mech. Get to the babble. Dodging. Dodging. Green. Beat up the spooky boy. Lots of CC. I like how there's just like a big crisscross of golems just charging all over the place there for a second. <laughs> Dodging. We gotta beat up Dark Saul. He's underneath Demo, so easy cleave. Dodging. Yes, I am going to say it every time because it might help them. Oil, watch out! Get dizzy, Babble. Wish I had ranged damage right now. I can't do anything. Dodging. More oil. Green. Oh, that's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Mm, this guy over here, gotta hit the one with a different steak. Beat up Dark Saul. He's a little busy. I'm a little busy. Sorry if I missed a message. Watch out for oil. Dodging. Saul split. He's still alive. Babble. Dodging. Oh boy, Chad, I hope everyone here knows about the edge. 
coil. Dodging. Green. Someone's downstate. Two people are downstate. Oh no. Oh no. Who did we just lose? The hand kiter. Okay, if you get hands on you, run away from the raid. Uh, two people downstate also. Save them if you can. Ah, oh, where's the heal scourge? I can't get him out of this! No, dang it. No one's helping me res. I'm dead. Well, I was just about to ma make such high praises. Like, wow, joined an E-Raid and we one-shot it. Ah, sad noises. Aegis Mug? Aegis isn't going to help me from hands. <laughs> I might have been able to Aegis the Blast, but I was, like, already, like, super, super low health. The tears destroyed us while you guys were down. Skill issue. <laughs> taking shield for this fight? I mean, if I was the tank, I would. But, I'm not. Blue gun is really good for dealing with these pros. Zibabu. Dodging. Watch out for the hands, dodging. Stomp the terror. Oil, oil, oil. The glue covers the oil. It just makes it a surprise mechanic. You know, like loot boxes. Oil. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Green. Different stick.
We're back. Watch out for the hands. Bubble, watch out for the oil under the boss. Dodging. New oil. It's under the glue under the boss. There's a pride right here. Dodging. Oil. New pride. Bubble. New oil, watch out. Green. Oh. Wow. Okay, we're okay. Downstate, downstate, save him. Dodging. Oil, oh, get out of it, dodge. Burn your dodges. Burn your dodges, get out of it. This is not a white, but it is bad. New oil, new oil, new oil. Dodging. We st a DPS focus on Dark Soul. He still needs to go down. Dark Soul, you swine! He ported me out of the bubble! Thank you. Revive, 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 save you! Yui down. That was such a B move. Oh, I can't stomp this. Someone stomp that tear. Remember, do not be between him and a oil, because he can knock you backwards into it. New oil on the boss. I'm afraid to do. I'm afraid to use my sword three chat. It might just eat me right into the oil. We're just gonna sit back here and melee. <laughs> New oil. Easy! First try! Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, for anyone who didn't see it, near the end of the fight there, like the last bubble, I, ra I like ran into it at the last second because it's like the oil faded, dived into the bubble, and then Saul ported me out of it. <laughs> it's like, no! <laughs> so just suddenly my downstate just got yeeted across the platform. Okay. G G guys G G. Well done, well done. Let's see how did how did I do? Eighteen point nine k on that. It's all right. It was kind of funny having so many necros because like every time a break bar would happen, I would just see this massive crisscross of flesh golems just all over the place. No. Mark, uh, chap, your uh, DM for the new emote. New emote. Uh, dived or dove? Dovin. We dovin. Uh, Discord's being weird. It's still trying to load it. Alright. Thank you for the run, friends. Thank you for the run. I'm gonna step out of the Discord. Alright. Dovacane. Yeah, restart game. Eh, in a minute, in a minute, in a minute. We gotta, we gotta do this. Before we possibly break arc, we gotta do this. Alright, hold on. All right. What did... Okay, hold on, hold on. Heisen sent me this. 
What is this? You just stay like that? You just stay like that. Use the sound. I just assumed that you had something inappropriate here. I do not know if that's an edit or not. I, I do not know if that's an edit or not. But thank you for sending me a clip of you moaning. Appreciate that. It's not. It is. Great. Awesome. Uh, okay. Let's get this set up. Spawn a golem. Average. Average. Additional. Condies. Just slap all of them on there. Spawn. Alright. Uh, <clears throat> adjust self. Add boons. Uh, offense. Fury. Might. 25, uh, defense, prot, no, oh, uh, utility, quick, regen, so I figure. Okay. All right, chat. It's time to record a thoughts video. We're going to get thunking. Y'all ready to thunk? Here we go. Alright, hey YouTube, we are back and trying out another one of the offensive uh, support DPS builds in the game and seeing how it feels compared to the others. Uh, this is the Alacrity Providing DPS Mechanist. Now, there are many ways to play this. Uh, when I first was looking at the build on this, I wanted to see the ones that parsed at the top and I managed to find um, Condition Alacrity Mechanist and then uh, I saw... What was it? Power Alack Mechanist was in the Legacy. Snowcrows has given up on Power Alack Mechanist. So I tried Condi Alack Mechanist first, but it is running three kits, which means you got to use basic weapon attacks, grenade attacks, bomb kit attacks, and flamethrower attacks, so you're juggling four weapons. Pain in the butt. Uh, but I tried it, and then I tried swapping out flamethrower for shift signet, um, and it was okay. Uh, I got like 20-something K DPS. I'll put up a clip of that. Uh, and I was like, all right, let's try the other version. And I tried the other version with Rifle, and it did okay. And then someone sent me a link to a Mr. Mystic build. Uh, now, Mr. Mystic uh, has a video where he just does sword pistol alack mechanist. So I copied what he was doing, and it's extremely ungabunga. I think you guys would love this one. Uh, this one is, you don't, you don't weapon swap at all, and there's no kits. So it's basically like, you, you hit one through five whenever they light up. And you hit throw mine whenever it lights up. And you hit F1 through F3 to provide alacrity whenever they light up. And then this, when possible, when it won't interrupt your F3. That's it. That's the thing. So just to show you really quickly here, here's a robot. And we're just going to rock in here. Do do. There's the alacrity buttons. And do that, do that, do that, do that. And waiting on the F3 to finish. And then activate the big laser. There it goes. Straight to the moon. And you can see we're currently, uh, the number's going to go down a little bit. You know, the, the power DPS always looks really impressive at the beginning, but then they fizzle out like a bottle rocket, and then they need 10 minutes to sit under a fan and have a drink of water. But it's going to go down to mid to low 20s. Uh, but, you know, a lot of strong opener at the beginning of the fight. Whereas the Condi version of this uh, started off low and then climbed up to like low 20s by the end. Uh, in my experience, of course, I, I might have not been playing it well. Like, this is really easy. Like, I have not played this build before, and I'm able to carry on a conversation while doing it. It's that low brain power. Uh, but the, the Condi one, you know, juggling the five, the, the, sorry, the four weapons, including the multiple kits, was much more challenging. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the build. Let's talk about the build itself. Um, it provides alacrity to your party. It provides fury to your party. And between 15 and 25 stacks of might. Mr. Mystic's video says he was getting 25 stacks of might from himself. I could not replicate that. Uh, I was able to get uh, like 15 to 20 and it would fluctuate there. But if you've got a healer support in the group, uh, you combined are absolutely capped on might. So that's nice. You're pitching in with that a little bit. You're providing fury. Uh, and you've got, um, uh, you you've got the alacrity covered, of course. Uh, now, what about utility? Now, this build actually does have a group-wide Condition Cleanse, Stability, and Aegis 
but it's all on one button. So if you use any of those things, you're using all of those things and stun break. Now, this button is used a lot to keep the alacrity up. Uh, for anyone not familiar with how the alacrity mechanism works, essentially what it is is any time it gives you barrier, you gain an application of alacrity. Uh, and this trait is every three seconds. You know, I'm going to hit this thing on purpose for just a second, but then I'm going to call my mech off. And every three seconds that we're in combat, uh, wait, does the mech have to be in combat? Hang on a second. All right, we should see blue there. All right, there we go. So the, that was weird. The mech wasn't in combat. All right, so those blue numbers are barrier. Now, they're not very impressive barrier numbers because we are not running healing power, but it is giving me those every three seconds. So that gives some applications of alacrity. Uh, now, barrier burst uh, pulses barrier for five pulses. So that's going to be five applications of alacrity after it's done. Also, that gives fury and some might. And crisis zone gives... Uh, alacrity just flat out gives nine seconds of alacrity, almost ten seconds of alacrity, along with all that other stuff. So Crisis Zone is often spammed by these builds off cooldown just to keep the alacrity up. However, you do uh, you have a little bit of leeway. So, like for example, if you know the boss is going to do something where you could use stability in like five seconds, you could just hold off on your F two for like five seconds to uh, counter that, and then you'll be refreshing the alacrity after that. Uh, so you, it's not quite on demand, but nearly. So it's nice to have. Uh, additionally, uh, throw mine, you know, just great damage, boon removal, stuff like that. However, on some fights, I would swap about, swap it out. So like, uh, we did Dagda and Bone Skinner, among other things today. And for those, I brought Barrier Signet. And Barrier Signet is wherever the mech is, uh, is a anti-projectile bubble. So that completely shut down some of the attacks from Dagda, and on Bone Skinner, it would occasionally protect the party from all the incoming shots. Additionally, because Barrier Signet provides five applications of Barrier, it provides Alacrity five times, uh, which can give you the freedom to uh, not use Crisis Zone nearly as much, um, possibly at all, for the Barrier thing. Now, uh, barrier Signet doesn't give any damage. So if you take Throw Mine off the bar and put Barrier Signet there, you're reducing your damage output slightly. Uh, however, if you want to do a fight and you're in charge of doing an important Aegis or stability, I would probably bring Barrier Signet to make sure that your Alacrity is covered so that you can free up this button for other things. For most of the fights, you could just replace Barrier Signet with something else. Uh, if you were doing something you need a lot of a CC, you could use Personal Battering Ram, which has two charges of a big, big CC. If you're doing something uh, that, honestly, if you're doing like, any of the standard stuff, I would say Throw Mind is a very good default because it is 200 CC, which is almost as much as a Battering Ram. Uh, also, it's Boon Rip, and also it's good damage. Um, additionally, this was my first time playing an Engineer build with Offhand Pistol since they reworked Glue Shot uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I think, at the time of recording this. Uh, glue Shot, you know, it's uh, immobilized if it hits, and then it pulses Cripple after. However, uh, they gave it some really good power damage. Uh, so the it, it does 2,900 base on impact, um, so it, it does, you know, good damage in that regard. And so you can see that, well, the, the rocket keeps skewing the numbers. It's, <laughs> the, the, the rocket going in after, but you get, you get the idea. The glue shot does damage on impact now, which it did not used to do, or it did very, very low damage. So it's actually worth mashing in the power rotation. A uh, few thoughts on glue shot, though, for this build. Uh, it was really good for some fights. We did uh, Deimos. And it was good, great on the prides. I had a high damage ability that immobilized and spammed cripple on things. It was perfect for keeping the, the prides away from uh, Saul. If you don't know the Deimos fight, big ad spawns. It's a walking bomb. You need to kill it before it gets to a dude to keep him alive. And it was perfect for that. Uh, additionally, though, a problem with it is Glue Shot had an issue that I had when I was playing uh, Untamed builds, which is the green snot stuff. The glue covers stuff on the ground. So, Deimos has another mechanic that people call Oil or Defile because of World of Warcraft having a similar mechanic. Basically, it's a black puddle, and if anyone stands in it, it expands and starts just, like, doing massive damage to the raid. So, you need to not touch it. Well, the glue would cover it. So, I was having to be very vocal. Now, we were on comms, uh, so I, and I was just like, you know, watch out, Oil under the glue, back up. And they were awesome, they were listening, there was some slip-ups, but I don't think it was because of the glue. However... It was throwing a wrench into it, you know? 
So I would very much like to see that changed. Um, I don't know if they will or not. It's probably been that way forever, but it's probably not been an apparent thing until now because people weren't using glue shot as part of their DPS rotation until now. Um, now, power, uh, or sorry, a lack mechanist, again, had many ways of playing it. There's Condi a lack mech that uses a lot of kits. There is power lack mech with a rifle that has the ranged advantage, but it does slightly lower damage. It does a few thousand DPS less than this. And then there was this sword pistol one that I found on Mr. Mystic. And you know what? I'm sure you could use a hammer with this build as well. Uh, this is what I settled on, and I ran some raids and strengths with it, and it felt good. It, it was easy to learn. Uh, it, no weapon swapping, no kit swapping for this version of the thing. So it was really easy to learn. It kept up alacrity, kept up fury, kept up like 20 stacks of might. Um, it has a little bit of flexibility. You know, you can swap out some of the stuff on your bar. Like they're not, you know, hard locked in. It's not like I have to run these utilities. You can change these based on the fight if you need to do some minor tweaks for anything. Uh, so, you know, I would say this is probably the normal. Um, a barrier signet was very good for some fights as well, as mentioned before. You do have stability and Aegis in the build, but you need to plan ahead a little bit if you want to use them because you need to either uh, barrier signet to cover the alacrity so that you can save this as much as you want, or you can just kind of like try to line this up and just like, okay, I'm not going to refresh alacrity for five seconds to use this. And then, okay, I count, I, you know, countered the ability we needed stability for, and now we have alacrity again. Um, that, that's basically it. Uh, this one was really easy to pick up. This version of it, again, was super easy to pick up. It did the job. Uh, very noob friendly. Oh, I didn't even talk about the build itself. I was running, uh, full Berserker gear on over here. With the exception, I did not have a Berserker pistol, and I didn't want to mess with that, so I used a Celestial pistol I had, so that should have made, like, maybe a 1% difference. Uh, over here, we've got uh, full diviners or diviners, depending on what you're going to tell me is the correct way to say it today, and Relic of the Thief. Uh, that's what I used over here. Uh, this was the build here, pretty standard stuff. Um, on most of the fights, I would say I was doing around 20k, but uh, you know, while providing boons, but if the fight required a lot of like moving in and out or the boss going invulnerable periodically, you know, stuff like that, the numbers would be lower. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that, that, that's pretty much it. That, that's, uh, that was my experience with it. That's how it feels. Uh, a little amount of utility does the job easy to learn. That's kind of how I classify this right now. And uh, yeah, I'm off to the next one. All right, there we go. Boom. Fix glue shot. That's the lesson here. Fix glue shot. All right, easy. Uh, do I have any special notes on that? Yeah, I didn't... Where's my Where's my Excel? Okay, this was this is what we were doing here. Uh, crap, Scrapper. What did I run on Scrapper? Crap. I think I ran Berserkers on that. Hold on. Uh, Burs plus Diviner. Hold on a second. I gotta check this. I forgot to write this down. Me. Power, Quickness, Scrapper. Here we go. Uh, I ran full Berserkers. Yeah, I remember it was like Berserkers with a few pieces of dragons, and I just said muck that, and I did full Berserkers. Um, let's see, this was melee with ranged uh, mortar option. Uh, scrap, uh, mechanists, uh, mini builds, tested uh, sword pistol. All right, uh, any special notes? Let's see, mechanists has stab aegis in kit but have to plan for it because it also gives a lack that's the thing. how much is the different damage difference on a dps mac between sword pistol and hammer i'm not sure i have not tested that specifically hello thank you um could maybe try it hang on Let's see. Um, equipment. And customize. Burrs. What was the sigils? Force and air. Oh, 
Okay. Mm. Let's see. Oh, forgot to use the laser. I think we're falling a tiny bit below Sword Pistol right now. It's really close, just with my inexperienced self doing this, it's pretty close. Although, this kit does have a block in it, which is extremely powerful, so... That's a trade-off. Give up a tiny bit of damage and then you get a block though, but that adds a lot of survivability. This would have more CC access, that too, yeah. But, yeah, I, I already mentioned that you probably could use hammer. Mm, okay, let me... It has more CC and cleave. Uh, I mean, both of those weapons cleave. Okay, hang on a second. Let me... Relaunch the game. It's gonna patch. Take a bite of the sandwich. Oh. Hang on, just like. There's patching. Just have to be uh, careful on Matthias, learn that the hard way. Uh, what, because of the reflect? I'm guessing. All right, patch has downloaded. Logging in. I was uber buffing the boss with hammer too. Mmm. 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 -mm. I um was testing Hammer Quickness Scrapper the other day, and we went to Wing 4, and I knew mentally you're not supposed to use Reflex when you're fighting Karen, But I had never played a role where I had a Reflect just in my rotation. And I did um, Hammer 2 on Karen when he fired his shotgun, and I like reflected the bullet, which somehow hurt me, and then just like sent myself flying <laughs> through the air. I was, I don't know, when you reflect a bullet on Karen, it looks more like you just grab hold of the bullet and you just like, go take me for a ride. It was, uh, and I was like, oh yeah, all right, okay. I gotta wait for him to fire and then I hit right after. Hmm. All right, what's going on here? Um, transmutation shard five pack. Chat, get your free transmutation charges. Get your freebies. I'm gonna I'm gonna tweet this for the uh, for the interactions, chat. I'm gonna I'm gonna farm engagement. Boom. Engagement farmed. Alright. Oh, they actually remembered the infinite continue coin. They forgot to put it in the store last year. Holy crap, they remembered to include the silver continue coin. Jackals, don't copy me. Alright. Hmm. 
Abyss Hunter Appearance Package. What's this? You get little claws. I hunt abysses. Hmm. Gold weapon box. The golden doot. Pretty schnazzy. Pretty schnazzy. Are these new? I don't remember these. I think they might be. Oh, and immediately someone's telling me they're not new. Mm, I guess I just haven't seen them recently. Of after images, yeah, golden ones. Hmm. What else we got? Pro motions. Super venture box pack. That is a lot of dies. There's so many dies. Organize the shape of some, not texture of others. Does, uh, was there any patch notes? Let me see. Guild Wars 2 blog. Uh, what? We got a 404 quagga not found. Mm, thank you, Gion. Check the black lion chest. Oh, boy. Let's see. The Unleash Emotome. Oh, this is the one that uh, that Heisen showed. Hmm. I feel like I remember these. I think these are new. I remember this handle looking very dangerous to hold. Move to the vendor a few months, I guess. Yeah. Let's see. Um. I'm looking at it. Wow. Okay. Oh my god. What? Okay. So there's, yeah, there's. There's, there's some patch notes. Crap. <laughs> what did they do? Lots of NG worldly world nerfs. Wait, Ranger Flourish got nerfed? That's Mace 2. Reduce the base healing by half? Wow. Wait, and then Regent was there. Invigorating bond base healing reduced by one. Hmm. Weird. Good time? Yeah, I didn't finish my food first. Weird, these notes are like all over the place. Like, nerf snap pull and PVE. 
uh, nerfed Bullet Catcher in PvP, and nerfed Scorched Earth in World v. World. Like, <laughs> what's their vision for Warrior? They're just, like, going all over the place. Hmm. All right, bear with me. I'm almost done with this sandwich, and then we'll go over these notes in detail. I'm just skimming right now. There's the new feature. Let me see if it's working. You there. I am stealing your fashion. Never mind, I don't want it. You there. I'm stealing your fashion. Yeah, so some of the stuff says where it's from. Hmm. This guy's movies hanging out. Bestial Tides Tattoo Chest. I'm spinning your character, and there's nothing. You know that whole thing? It's like, I'm rotating a cow in my mind, and there's nothing you can do about it. You can be like, I'm rotating your character, and you can't stop me. Can we see infusions? No, we cannot. And I actually said in my video that I think you should be able to see cosmetic infusions. But you cannot. Chad, I'm stealing your fashion, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Your enjoyment of the game has decreased exponentially. Now that there is an Asura version of you running around. You worked so hard on this look, but it's mine now. Chibi Drago? No. <laughs> Fashion Wars is over. <laughs> oh no. I'm gonna message this guy and be like, what, you're only using 18 silver dyes? What are you, poor? Chad, don't talk to me or my son ever again. <laughs> Mug selling people's identities, yep. Get permafrost die, idiot. That, that's where the real money is. Mmm. Alright. Man, should I should I rant about the pe rant about the people ranting about cosmetic inspection during the video? <laughs> uh, all right. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go over the notes. Let's see if there's any other juicy juicy tidbits. Here we go. Streamer poor shaming players. Dude, I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> Ramen all day, every day. All right. All right, hello friends. Today is April 16th, and we've got some new Guild Wars 2 news. Uh, let's see. Note to users of third-party programs. Due to possible... Blah, 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 blah. Your add-on's probably broke. Okay. Super Adventure Festival. Moto's world-renowned Super Adventure Box returns again. Let me turn my game down. 
Explore two worlds and one test zone of excitement, peril, and educational entertainment to earn holographic weapons and a variety of loot. Travelers can visit the Super Adventure Box in Ratasum. Temporary portals have been placed in each major city to facilitate easy access to the scenic hub of a certain culture. Complete the festival's meta achievement, Annual Super Adventure Box Nostalgia, to earn the new Powered Shoulders Armor. Last year's reward, the Powered Gloves, are now available from the Super Adventure Box Traders. Let me see if I can find that so that we can display it. I am opening up the dressing room right now. Okay, and it is called Powered. There we go, uh, Powered Shoulders. There you go, that's them right there. Glorious, okay. Uh, the new Golem Buster weapon set is now available. You receive your choice of a weapon by progressing the Super Adventure Box Nostalgia Meta Achievement and you can earn additional choices through weekly festival achievements. Okay, uh, weapon search Golem Buster, okay, that didn't work. Let's just search Buster. Uh, oh, it's Golem Dash Buster. Okay, you got you gotta have the hyphen. It's like it's like Spider Man. Okay, here we go. Sword, hammer, longbow, shortbow, axe, dagger, mace, pistol. Oh, that's fancy. Lucian from League of Legends vibes. Uh, rifle. Woo! Uh, Scepter, Staff, Focus, okay, uh, Torch, Purple Cube Fire, that is not something I thought I was going to see today, alright, Warhorn, the Super Adventure Doot, Shield, and they got after images. All right, that's the Golem Buster set. Okay. Uh, new weapons have been added to the Retro Forged set. You can purchase these weapons directly from a festival vendor or find them as rare drops in super loot bags. All right, I don't know which ones are new, which ones are not, so I'll just quickly go through all of them. All right. Schwad. Hammer. Not new, I already had it. Shortbow. Dagger, not new because I already had it. Mace, pistol. Ah, that hurts my eyes. Rifle, scepter, spear. Thank God, finally, some underwater content. Harpoon gun. Okay. The annual Super Adventure Box Nostalgia Meta Achievement has been updated with additional goals, including the box's prototype level, the World 3 Test Zone. And for those who weren't active last year, I believe it, last year was the first year of the World 3 Test Zone. Uh, I don't know if they added any more to it or if it's still the same as it was last year. Um, the weekly Super Adventure Festival achievements have been combined into a single achievement. Weekly Super Replay. New updates have been added to the Test Zone. Oh, they did add stuff. Shops, Blue Oozes, Secret Caves, a coin collecting adventure, and new achievements to go along with them. Delve into the caves of the Test Zone, aid the miner Choya, and gain never-before-seen tools for your super adventure. Also, I should pause here for a moment. For anyone who might be a new player to the game and has played for less than a year, and they don't uh, know what the super adventure box is, let me demonstrate really quickly. So, a little, little uh, minute break here. I'm going to go to Radisson, uh best capital in the game here. Just have that moment of awkward silence. You can salute your flag of choice while we wait. There we go. All right. So, Super Adventure Box. And there's this box right here. And you can enter this and say, I'm ready. And you will get a crazy loading screen. And it will uninstall your whole game. And install a different game. I'm not editing this. You all have to just watch this awkwardness. There we go. Okay. This is the Super Adventure Box. And, uh, yeah. Clearly inspired by old 8-bit games. You can run around and do this stuff. I've got a whole guide on the basics of SAB if you want it. I'll link that in the, uh, the comment section down below. 
Uh, but basically, these different buildings here are entrances to the different zones, and there's a whole bunch of other activities around in this area as well. Okay, there we go. Boomer streamer. Yep, you either die young or you live long enough to be called a boomer. That's that's how it works these days. All right, new, let's see. The Mega Bomb has been updated to use ammo charges rather than consuming babbles. The new Super Adventure Box themed guild decorations have been added. Turn your hall into a cavernous uh, level of your dreams. I almost read this as lecherous cavern of your dreams, and then I was like, no. Uh, Super Grand Gate. Super Owl Statue, Super Red Crystal, Jackal Rental Post. Special objectives are available in the Wizard's Vault to earn Astral Acclaim as you enjoy the festival. A number of Super Adventure-related bugs have been fixed to ensure a safe education for all heroes. Festival uh, festivities began on April 16th, that's today, and continue until May 7th at noon Pacific time. Alright. Cosmetic Inspection. The new Cosmetic Inspection feature has been added. Uh, I don't know if it'll work in SAB. We'll find out. All right. Um, let's see. You. All right. Inspect cosmetics. Mm, actually, I don't want your cosmetics. Uh, let's see. Inspect cosmetics. Adequate. Very rangery. All right. I'm stealing your look. It's mine now. How can I? Oh, just die remover? All right. All right. It's basically her? Indistinguishable. Don't talk to me or my son ever again. There we go. All right. Yes. So the in cosmetic inspection feature is now in the game. This allows you to click on people if you're like, oh, wow, where do I get that hat or whatever? You can inspect them and you can look at what they got. And oh, she's looking right into my soul. You're going to face the other way. Get rotated, idiot. And you can look at what they've got. And then at the very least, you got an, an item name. And then you could go to the wiki and look for that item name and be like, oh, that's how to get it. I want I want to make that a goal. I want to make that a, a goal of mine to get that. Um, so that is the new feature into the game. You can also see the dies. You can also click find and trading posts because most dies can be bought. And you can see how much those dies cost on the TP, stuff like that. Uh, also, I think it's worth pointing out here. There has been an uptick. And I, I got I to gotta be honest, I almost never visit the Guild Wars 2 forums. Uh, I was... I found out about this on the grapevine from other people. There's actually quite a few people on the forums asking if they can opt out of the cosmetic inspection thing. They don't want people to be able to inspect them because they're afraid that people are going to steal their look. What? Okay. I am human. I have opinions. Here's my opinion on that. Okay, one, first of all, first time. I've got like 20 clones of me running around. Whatever. Two, I get that you're proud that you matched that hat with those gloves, with those boots, with that shirt, that kind of thing. It would make more sense to me if you made those art assets, you know? It's not like you, like, like look, like I identify with this hat. I did not draw the hat, right? If someone else is using the hat, I'm not like, oh man, that guy copied my look. No, he's just, he's using the same hat. Like, you know, we, we both shop at, uh, at the Gap, whatever. It's it, it, it's not a thing. I, I honestly hope that they don't put in extra development time making it so you can opt out of cosmetic inspection. I find that silly. Because, like, for example, this person here has no idea that I just inspected their, co ugh, inspected their cosmetics. They have no idea that that happened. There was no victim here. No one was hurt. And it's just a feature that is going to be like, oh, hey, oh, yeah, that's cool. I want to see where, the, where that hat is from. That, that's it. I honestly, at this point, just because I think that those folks are so silly with this, I think it would be funny if someone made an add-on that uh, can in, like inspect someone and then just be go hit apply look. And it would just change my entire character if I had those skins to look like them in one second. It's so, like I could walk up to them and if they said something snarky, I could just click a button and just morph into a short version of them. And they'd be like, don't steal my look. And I just morph into them and be like, don't steal my look. <laughs> just say it right back like Karen. I, honestly, I think that'd be hilarious. I think that would be hysterical. I need a button to change back afterward. I don't want to stay looking like this. That's my next point. A lot of people have very high opinions of their look. Yo, I don't even have that high opinion of my look. And I'm, I'm big fish, small pond famous. Like, it's, uh, I, I don't think it's a big deal. 
I hope they spend no further development time making it so you can opt out of that because I think that is ridiculously silly. All right, there we go. There we go. Uh, I am done bullying people that I don't know. Uh, okay, where were we? You can bring up the inspection option by right-clicking on a player or by typing slash inspect of the player selected. You know what? I do have one thought about this. I wonder if it has a range limit. Um, in some games, there is a range limit on it. So, like, I'm going to click that guy really far over there. Um, okay, so there's the target. They're super far away. And Oh, I just lost him. No. Okay. Okay. All right, as long as you don't lose the target, it seems like it works. It seems like it works. Okay, so probably uh, just the, the targeting range. Weapon information is hidden in competitive maps. Uh, I saw one funny line about this from uh, a, a, a viewer earlier that said, like, <laughs> ArenaNet, with how flashy these weapons are, I'm getting beat with. I don't even know what's hitting me. It, this, this, uh, it, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, many skins will now include information about the primary source for obtaining them when viewed in the wardrobe or the inspect panels. Yeah, I've seen a few of them that say, like, you know, found in the gem store or things like that. Due to the number of weapon and armor skins in the vast world of Tyria, the source descriptions are a work in progress that will be completed over time. I mentioned that during the news video yesterday, that with the thousands upon thousands of items in the game, I doubt they're all going to have descriptions right away. If at all. Alright, no more social interactions. Yeah, because the only way to start a conversation in the world is to say, where's that hat from? Look, if you really need it, say, hey, how much does a polar bear weigh? Enough to break the ice. How you doing? I like your hat. Yeah, boom. There it is. You're you're in at that point. You're in. Just write it down. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, many skins will now include information about the primary source for obtaining them being viewed in the wardrobe or the inspect panels. Due to the number of weapons that are... Oh, we already read that. Okay. You, you, you made me mess up. World Polish. Jade Tech Offensive Protocol and Jade Tech Defensive Protocol have been receiving have received the following updates. Increase the duration of Jade Tech Offense and Defensive Overcharge effects per activation from 15 minutes to 45 minutes. They tripled the duration. Nice. Uh, increase the maximum stack duration for both of them from 2 hours to 2.25 hours to 3 hours. Remove the timeout period for applying additional Jade Tech Offense and Defense Overcharge effects and shorten the duration of interactions. Increase the internal cooldown for Jade Tech Offense and Defense uh, Overcharge application when entering combat from 30 seconds to 90 seconds. Fix an issue that caused the Defeat the Claw of Jormag World Boss or complete events in Frostgord Sound weekly objectives in the Wizard's Vault to only progress by one point when the Claw of Jormag itself is defeated rather than instantly completing. Fixed a client clash in... Uh, sorry, da, 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 client crash in convergences. I cannot talk today. Uh, items. Hero's Choice Chest will now appear in a clickable pop-up UI chest instead of being manually obtained from a chest object in the world. I wonder what impact that will have on places like Auric Basin's um, meta, the Octovine, because that one, you can get the Hero Choice Chest many times per day, where but most Hero's Chests are once a day. So I wonder if this is going to make Octovine a once-a-day chest. Or if it will still be what it is before. I'll have to go try that out. That, that, that will take at least two hours to test. Because I'll have to do it and then join another one later that day and then do it again. Uh, World v. World. The following changes are part of an ongoing effort to make fighting for and in objectives feel better for attacking groups as the defender's advantage inside their own structures was too strong. While we don't want to swing that advantage completely in favor of attacking groups, we also want to encourage player interaction so that large portions of attacks against structures don't feel like a slog with little payoff. We feel that the changes will help to incentivize more players versus player interactions while still allowing for defensive tactical gameplay. We will continue to monitor how these changes affect siege and structure attacks. Uh, across all objective tiers, walls and gates will be now be rebuilt when 50% of their health has been restored. Uh, what was it before? Like 10 or 20, I think? 50% health is needed to rebuild the wall now. I think, it, I think that's up from like 10 or 20. It has been a while since I World V Worlded. I don't remember the exact number, but it was it was much lower than that. Several objectives capture... Uh, so several objectives capture boundaries have been resized in all four maps. Uh, Jay, Jay in chat says I think it was 10. Uh, resource camp capture boundaries are now the same size in all maps, with two outliers. Rogue's Quarry, the Green World's northern camp in the Eternal Battlegrounds, and Ham's Lab, the northern camp in Desert Borderlands, remain unchanged. Generally, this is a reduction in capture boundary size for Alpine Borderlands and Eternal Battlegrounds camps, and an increase for Desert Borderlands camps. 
Capture boundaries in Odell Academy, Crankshaft Depot, and Parched Outpost, uh, Northwest, Southwest, and Southeast Desert Borderland Towers has been reduced. Stone Mist Castle's capture boundary has been reduced and centered. Capture boundaries for Green World Keep, Red World Keep, and Blue World Keep in Eternal Battlegrounds have all been reduced. Capture boundaries for Garrisons and Alpine Borderlands have been reduced and centered. Capture boundaries for Dreadfall Bay and Ascension Bay in Alpine Borderlands have been reduced and now match those of Shadowrun Hills and Askelion Hills. Synthesizer and Tactivator locations have been moved in most camps to ensure they are still inside the capture boundaries. Presence of the Keep and Guild Objective Aura bonuses effects now provide 25 power, precision, toughness, and vitality instead of 100. Uh, interesting. You know, the funny story here, the only reason I know about, or rephrase, the re way I learned that those buffs existed was Nudie's videos about Fast Car. Because he would complain that he'd be trying to like fight this guy, they'd be talking script, and the guy would never come more than like five feet away from a keep, so he always had the keep buffs. And that's how I learned the keeps had buffs, was those like love videos that they kept making about each other. Uh, the Empower Healing skill that was added to keep Lords and Alpine Borderlands and Eternal Battlegrounds will now grant stability to allies it affects. Siege Golems no longer cause capture objectives to be contested in World vs. World. You gotta get out of the robot shot. Flame Ram's Iron Will skill now shares a cooldown between players. The Siege Disabled Effect Marker has been removed from Siege Weapons affected by Siege Disruptors. Uh, that's right. So they recently re, uh, they changed Siege Disablers into Siege Disruptors, but apparently was still using the old icon. Uh, the next few changes continue from a recent update that added a new bag options with Grandmaster Mark Shards included in the price. Our goal for this, and for updates from last year, is to give World v. World players more options for spending their World v. World currencies and improve quality of life for currency exchange World v. World. We felt that a surplus of Memories of Battle specifically brought the price down too far, and there was not enough opportunities to spend them. We will continue keeping an eye on this vendor and other new vendor purchases to determine whether we need to make further updates. Proof of Heroics and Testimonies of Desert Heroics can now be traded to Heroic Notaries in exchange for Testimonies of Jade Heroics. All items offered by Heroic Notaries have been updated to require testimonies of Jade Heroics. Memories of Battle are no... You know, I wonder if this would impact the experience I had the other day. Um, all items offered by Heroic Notaries. There was a, a video I did the other day when I was um, trying out the different support builds in the game. And one of them I was like, oh, I don't have... I think it was Spectre unlocked. So I had to go into uh, World v. World and spend some currencies in order to unlock it. And it was like a nightmare. Like, I'd made a few mistakes, and then fixing it was, like, impossible, so I had to spend more resources, and it was just, like, the whole, like, bouncing between all the different currencies, if you don't do it regularly, was confusing. So, uh, I hope that this streamlines that process for other people. Memories of Battle are no longer available for purchase from Dugan, and some of the merchants' purchasing options have been updated. An option to exchange boxes of Grandmaster Marks or Grandmaster Marks Shards has been added to the Skirmish Supervisor. Okay, I was wondering about this. So if you turn all your shards into marks and then you can't buy the bags, there's a way to undo that now. All right. Profession skills. I was honestly not expecting any class updates today, so I'm surprised to see this. Uh, engineer, Gleam Sabers. This is on the sword. Fix an issue causing the skill to reduce the recharge time of Radiant Arc by three seconds when the Hollowsmith Elite spec was not equipped. Uh, so for those that don't know, Engineer Sword, uh, on the auto chain, so when you do 1-1-1, one, 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 the third time it does 1, it reduces the cooldown of the other sword skills. And it's supposed to be weakened if you're not playing Hollow Smith, because, you know, Weapon Master Training, you can now use it on other engineers. Uh, I used it on Mechanist today, I was tinkering around with that. And, uh, it was apparently not doing what it was supposed to do. Photonic Blasting Module reduced the damage coefficient from 3.5 to 2.5 in World v. World. Prime Light Beam fixed an issue that caused the skill to strike 10 targets instead of 5. Nerf Engineers right now. It's overpowered. Uh, Essence of Animated Sand. This is from the short bow that they recently got. Reduced the barrier healing power coefficient from 1 to 0.5 in World v. World. They thought it was healing too much in World v. World. Reduced the initial might from 5 stacks to 2 in World v. World and PvP. Essence of Living Shadows. Reduced the initial conditions cleanse from 2 to 1 in World v. World. Essence of Liquid Wrath fixed an issue that caused the tooltip to display longer durations than intended in World v. World. I'm sad to see that none of that is related to what I feel is the most important thing about the bow, and that is the arrow... Uh, is it the three? I don't recall the number. But one of the short engineer shortbow skills covers red circles. So if he fires it, 
and there's like red circles under it killing you, you can't see them. Uh, similar situation with the Pistol 5 glue gun on Engineer and the Untamed Snot Clouds and stuff like that. They cover up red stuff on the ground and you can't see them. So I'm sad to see that that's not one of the things fixed here. Uh, Bulwark Gyro, increase the cooldown from 20 to 30 seconds in World v. World. That's the one that gives a bunch of barrier. Uh, reduce the base initial barrier from 1600 to 1100 and the pulsing barrier from 800 to 500. Wow. So drastically, 50% more cooldown and they nerfed it hard. Reduce the initial barrier healing power coefficient from 0.8 to 0.5 and the pulse barrier healing power coefficient from 0.4 to 0.25 in World v. World only. Okay. Oh, Bulwark Gyro just got smacked pretty hard. Guardian. Symbol of Protection. Reduce the symbol damage coefficient from 0.4 to 0.25 in World v. World only. Mesmer. Fixed an issue that prevented the shimmering visual effect from appearing on the skill bar for characters using the Mirage Elite spec. Chaotic Transference trait no longer shares Chaos Aura with nearby allies. It now grants regeneration to nearby allies when you apply Chaos Aura to yourself. Um... Hmm. A few thoughts on this. There, there's been a few times when people, when I've looked at different builds to test them, and people have been like, I've been like, oh, this Mirage doesn't keep up boon up time on this, this, or this. And people will be like, oh, but it gets Chaos Aura. And I'm like, I don't think you understand how that works. If you give someone Chaos Aura, then they have, what, they have to get hit. And if they get hit, then it gives them a random boon from a pool of options. Then it might give them the one you want. Let's say Regen. So you can't just give them Chaos Aura and assume regen's covered. Like one, they have to get hit in the face, and then two, they have to just roll it on a dice. So this is making it so you're no longer can get other options, you're just going to get regen uh, for, your, for your allies. So I would say I probably consider this a good thing because it's going from something that is RNG to something that you can rely on, and that's usually better. Like, no matter what the boon is, if it's something you can rely on, you can make a build around that. So that's probably good. Um, Mender's Purity, lesser power cleanse, and no longer triggers restorative mantras. Journey, reduce the base healing from 911 to 719, and reduce the healing power coefficient from 0.67 to 0.4 in PvP only. They're not nerfing that in PvE. Abstraction, reduce the base healing from 1900 to 1600, and reduce the healing power coefficient from 1 to 0 0.8 in PvP. Okay? Uh, live vicariously. Oh, sorry, so we're in Ranger now. Live vicariously. This trait is no longer activated by pulsing healing effects such as regeneration. Flourish, which is the Ranger's new Mace 2. Reduce the he base healing from 970 to 509 in PvE. Massive. Honestly, Ranger... It, Druid has so much healing, it would still be okay with this. Um, I think Untamed would probably be fine too. There's an Untamed heal and Druid heal, and they both use the mace for the heal. Uh, reduce the healing power coefficient from 0.4 to 0.25, and reduce the regen duration from 4 to 3, but that regen part is only in PvP. Um, so Flourish... Flourish is nice. So Flourish is still going to keep up regen and stuff on people. Uh, but the healing it does is going down. Uh, so let me, can I see it while I'm in Super Adventure Box? Hang on just a second. Thank you! Just a moment. Hey. Uh, Mace, here we go, yeah. So Flourish has a six second cooldown. So every six seconds, in addition to doing damage and reapplying regen, it was doing a burst of healing. That burst of healing is what got nerfed. Um, and before, when Rangers were using Axe Warhorn with Staff to heal, Axe Warhorn did not have any bursts of healing. It kept boons up, it did a little bit of damage, but it didn't have any bursts of healing. So this basically, you know, they were still able to keep boons up, and then they were also getting healing they didn't have before on top of it. So they probably felt that that pushed them too high on their healing output. Uh, sad to see it go, but I'm, it feels fair. Invigorating Bond. Reduce the base healing from a 1k to 820. Reduce the ba uh, healing power coefficient from 1 to 0 0.5. And reduce the protection duration by 1 second in PvP. So Invigorating Bond is a not required trait for Druid healing, but it is one you can do builds around. Uh, and basically whenever you use your pet's um, F2, it will do a big heal 
and also uh, help do prot and vigor uptime around you, and it has a 20 second cooldown. So if the pet's F2 skill is less than a 20 second cooldown, it won't proc every time. If it's more than that, it'll proc every time. Uh, Revenant, they have changed true nature. Fix an issue that could cause the skill to be accidentally cast immediately after activating facet of nature. Okay, maybe they added like a half second cooldown to it or something. Uh, Warrior. Path to victory. Reduce the damage coefficient from 1.25 to 0.91 in PvP only. Reduce the base healing from 975 slash 1950 slash 2900 to 559 slash 1700 slash 2900. Um, so the last one is the same. The first one is half what it was, and the middle one's about the same. Based on adrenaline level in PvP only. Increase the healing power coefficient from 1 slash 1.25 slash 1.5 to 133-16720. Oh, okay, so, so it'll scale better with healing power than it did in PvP only. Um, Linebreaker. Reduce the base healing from 2200 to 1300. Ooh. And increase the healing power coefficient from 1.25 to 1.75 in PvP only. You know, honestly, at this point, I'm not sure if I've been reading some of these correctly. For example, this Linebreaker, I'm not sure if all of this is PvP only, or if this is everywhere, uh, sorry, uh, that part is everywhere, and then and that's PvP only. I'm not sure. Like this one says PvE and this one says PvP. So if assuming the same person wrote all these notes, I think this entire line is PvP. Uh, snap pull, increase the casting time by 0.15 seconds. Uh, bullet Catcher, increase the cooldown from 25 to 30 seconds in PvP. Scorched Earth, reduce the number of targets from 5 to 3 in World v. World only. Uh, interesting. This is all of those. So PvP change, PvP change, all game modes change, PvP change, World v. World change. Okay. All right. All over the place. All right. That's the last line. Uh, another thing. Let's see. Another thing that is new today, where is the Black Lion box? So in the Black Lion chest, there is a new thing added to the game called the Unleash Emote. And remember, if you don't like messing with the, the Black Lion chest, when the next chest comes, this will go onto a merchant where you can get it guaranteed. Uh, Lord Heisen, of course, has already thrown a ton of, uh, of, of dollary dues at the game and uh, sent me this link to show me. I'm sure that is not at all an edit on his part. I'm sure that this is in the game. And uh, yeah, you can you can just go AFK and just sit there with your crotch thrust out and just, uh, oh, just do, just do that for hours on end, apparently. So if you want that emote, now you know where to get it. Now you know where to get it. Uh, is that everything? Is that everything? I think so. Super Adventure Box is back. Uh, I've got a guide on the basics of that if you've never done it before and you're interested in doing that. Cosmetic inspection was added to the game. There has been some world v. world tweaks and some tweaks to Engineer, Guardian, Mesmer, Ranger, Revenant, and Warrior for those interested in that. Uh, any new gem store stuff? Yes. Uh, I showed it earlier. However, they did do a five free transmutation charge pack on the store today. So grab that if you're interested in that. Uh, additionally, they added Abyss Hunter Armor, which, I mean, just makes me look like a tiny angry dude. But that is there if you want it. Alright, that's everything new that I know about today. And, uh, if you have any questions, problems, thoughts, concerns, put them in the comment section down below. And I'll fight you there. Alright, all of Sura are tiny angry people. All tiny people are angry. They're closer to hell. <laughs> That's why old people are so mad all the time, because they get shorter. Muck, Wizard Vault, please. I already did the Wizard Vault today. Oh my gosh. Uh, I was down to 700 to change these charges, yep. Remember Gork and the metal to cut throats? I do, yes. I do remember that. Alright, where's, uh, where's World 3? It's been, it has been two years since I walked in here. Where's the demo world? Uh, that's world one. 
That's World 2. Okay, so the first one I went to was World 3, I think. Test Zone. Where's World 3? Is he's front of it? There wasn't a sign, Nolan! Blah! Ow. Oh my god. I don't know. I don't remember to play this game. Coin Machine. Cave Sage. Uh, let's see. Hang on. This is a test zone. Lord Vanquish conquered this land over 10 years ago, and now the Choya are forced to mine ore for his enemies. What can I do here right now? Defeat the Cage Guardian at the end of the zone to complete the level. Also, there are three secret chests to find with red baubles inside. Welcome to my humble roadside potion cart. Times are tough. Okay. There's some items there you can buy if you want. Do I have baubles? I do have baubles. Tribulation mode? No. Oh, that's right. They spin! I don't remember. Can I dodge in this mode? Yeah, I can dodge in this mode. Okay. Hold on. I'm gonna control right click that to put it on auto. There we go. Alright. Oh boy. No! Okay, so you can't just be behind it, though. Bah. You missed a bobble? You know what? I'm gonna purposefully not pick up the next one for you. See that bobble? I'm going to avoid it. Hey, nice healing item. Now we're talking. Ow! Not fair, I was dodging the other guy. Yo, I need stability! the range of the slingshot apparently not enough to reach that guy crystal what do you do that's going to disappear again right all right hold on what's the pattern here boop 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 Didn't even know what was giving Muck's character a tail earlier. Inspect him, lol. <laughs> uh, dragon, fireworks, backpack, and glider combo. What? What's the point of this? Uh, it's just a fun little thing. I just want to experience it once. Uh... 
where am I? Oh, do I go over there? That's a long jump. Oh, land on that thing. Does that move? Yeah, that one moves. Okay. No! Oh my god, I can't hit him with the slingshot. It's made of bad. A heal. Yes. It's like the monkeys are apologizing. There we go. You green thing is five bubbles. I I can't believe it after all these years they finally updated Guild Wars 2 graphics. Yeah, this is the new engine with the new DirectX that they've been talking about for a while. This is it, it's finally here. Three closed beta. Yes, only for very important potatoes. I don't know if the ropes are solid. I don't think they're solid, Chef. No! Um... Um, 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 <laughs> I gotta move. Dropped a healing item, purposefully leaving it on the ground for now. Oh my god. These monkeys too strong. Jeez. JP for that. Oh, there's a slime. Slime. Uh, look green to me. I tire of fighting spiders that are snappy dressers. I'm moving on. What's that? What? <laughs> What is this thing? Grumbles. I see, I see, I don't understand. It's like a fish with a snorkel.
Oh, I think we found the final boss. Ah! Okay, so when he laughs, maybe dodge backward. That's a sign. Yep. What if I just fire all my money at him? You fool, I've been farming my home instance, getting bobbles every day, all year. I'll just shoot it all at you. Oh no! Easy. Easy win. Got two bobble bobbles and a continue coin. Zone has been completed. Prepare to be teleported. Boy, this is the this is closest zoom in chat. Look, if I zoom in one tick, it does that. Uh, how do you obtain the gear from this, like the custom skin? I don't know how to do this. Uh, the equipment, like the slingshot and stuff, you get from the previous worlds. You want to do the worlds in order. I didn't argue the other day with my wife on the color of a shirt in the corner of the room. Needs to say she called me colorblind after that argument was over. Yeah, you know, there was that whole fiasco where people were looking at, was it the, the yellow dress, whether it was yellow or blue? I mean, different people's eyes do work differently. I mean, but d d not to s say your wife's wrong, you could be colorblind. <laughs> like, you might be blind. It's, it's possible. That That is in the realm of possibility. But I will say those slimes look green to me. Retro stuff. Mm. Chat? Eh, I don't know. That's a lot of bubble bu bubble bubbles. But eh, some of you may find some use from the Tyrian Exchange Voucher or the Chest of Legendary Shards. Powered Gloves Box. There's the medium ones. Why is it medium light heavy? That's... That's the powered gloves jump. That's blue. What do you have? Crimson stuff, super weapons, crimson stuff, designs. Okay. What can you trade bubbles for? You can trade bubbles for bobble bubbles. Uh, bobble bubble, like a, a stack of bobbles turns into one bobble bubble and that saves you inventory space. Um, I think most of my, yeah, so I've got some on this character, but most of them are on my other tune because my other tune does the home instance farming. Uh, however, the, the bobbles are also, bobble bubbles are used on these merchants a lot, but bobbles, the little ones, are used in the, uh, zones. Like, for example, that last boss there, I was firing bobbles from a slingshot and using them like bullets, and that allowed me to just not be, uh, not be melee, just play it ranged. If your wife says you're wrong, then you're wrong regardless of whether you're right or not. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Quick, quick serve, you guys. All right, so let me tell you guys about the one time I won an argument with my wife in like five seconds, okay? So uh, the time I was, uh, we were living in a, a little apartment because uh, we were poor <laughs> and she was going to the grocery store and I was like, I really could need, need some caffeine. Can you get like a two liter of Coca-Cola while you're there? And she's like, yeah, yeah, I could do that. So she goes to the grocery store and comes back with some groceries for our tiny refrigerator. And she pulls out and it's like Publix brand RC Cola or something like that. And I'm like, dear 
my love. What is this? And she's like, oh, well, it's like, it's like Coke. It's, it's the same thing, but it's on sale. And I was just like, I'll try it. And I poured a glass and uh, I took a drink and I was just like, I just looked at her and she's like, it's the same thing. And I was like, all right, would you please try a taste and see if you think it's the same thing? I try to be very diplomatic about it, chat. And she's like, oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> she said, I'm sorry. She apologized. After one taste of that crap, she apologized. And that is the first time I want to fight that quickly. Like, <laughs> never before have I won an argument with my lovely wife that fast as when she took a sip of Publix Brain Cola after calling it Coke. And then she apologized. <laughs> that's a, yes, that's a national holiday. Yes. Uh, I won't be showing up for work on Monday uh, in uh, remembrance of uh, I want to fight today uh, day. <laughs> that, is, that is the one time that happened. Clearly you don't know how to drink it. Wait, am I supposed to snort it? What do you mean I don't know how to drink it? It goes in mouth. He broke the curse. <sighs> Rolled in that 20. Oh, man. Mug not stream Monday, streak break. No, 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 no. We are day number 2,153 in a row without missing a day. Our streak is getting to the point where if I had to restart it for some reason, like, I, I don't know if we would ever get to this high again. No, 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 no. Bubble bubble. Oh, uh, let me check my, uh, my, so my Herald usually farms my home instance because he has permanent quickness because Heralds are overpowered. Let me check on him. I think he's got the, uh, I think he's got a bunch of bubble bubbles. She wasn't apologizing to you, she was apologizing to the coke. <laughs> yeah, okay. Bob. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I got 22 bubble bubbles on this guy. Yep, 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 yep. What if you have to go on vacation? I love my job so much, I voluntarily work like 60 to 80 hours a week sometimes. This is vacation. I just have to make sure I can pay the bills. <laughs> Playing games is the easy part. Making sure that everything is covered. Uh, I gotta be like, hey, Chad, have you heard about Twitch Prime? <laughs> you too can subscribe to your favorite streamer or Muckluck and get no more ads. And help me put an egg in my Robin. Well, okay, one ad. You know, that one. Uh, someone in chat said, Muck, you're lucky. Many guys swallow food from their wife's, like, pills. Closed nose, don't chew the food. What? Okay. I will say, because I'm, I'm working on this with my kid, teaching him that if he doesn't like a food, like, there's I'm a... sold. <laughs> Thank you. That it's, there's a polite way to still eat the food, right? Like, you know, this is dinner eat enough to stay alive till breakfast because you're on the grid. They know we have you, okay? You know, so you, we're, we're, we're working on that. But, yeah, dude, I'm very honest with my wife. Because, like, she tries... Sold. <laughs> she tries different uh, cooking stuff out a lot, and she'll be like, what did you think of this? And she, like, wants feedback. Best bait. <laughs> and she'll be like, yo, what do you think of this? And I'll be like, I think this is tasty. I am going to clean my plate. I'm going to finish it. I'd probably never request this, you know? Or I'll be like, oh, this is delicious. This is amazing. I want this again. Or I'll be like, mm, I'll finish it, you know? It's really rare. And when I say rare, I mean it's happened like once in the past few years that she put something on the table. And I was like, dear, I try to always clean my plate. And I am really sorry. 
I cannot finish this. <laughs> that happened once. She usually nails it. She usually nails it. She has a very good track record for like trying new cooking things. There, there, there's like very rare times that I'm just like, I can't get this down. I, it's, it's happened once or twice. What was it? This isn't very descriptive, but the only thing I remember is she said she she was trying to make a vegan dish. And she made it, and then I, I just remember I put it in my mouth, and it was just like grains moving around with like no it was like imagine grains of rice, but there was no moisture. Like it was it was really, really weird texture. And I don't remember what it was. I wish I did or I'd tell you. But after I said, I was like, I'm sorry, I, I cannot finish this. She was like, yeah, I really don't like this either. <laughs> and she was like really upset because she spent so much time on it, but no one liked it. And we all ended up throwing it out. And then she made like, like all of us, because my kid didn't like it either. My wife didn't even like it. And then she made like grilled cheese sandwiches for everybody. Naivila gifted sure. a tier one sub to Prime Gaming. Prime they have Gaming. given 564 gift Mr. subs in the channel. Mr. Prime himself is now subscribed to my channel. Who just subbed? Niavalar, Keijo GW2, Coolboy JK7, Swirl of Snow, Patty Cake Games. Thank you guys for the resubs. Welcome. Yo, you guys did Hype Train Level 2. Muggler Douglas, but thought it'd be original. Let's go the fourth. This is Jazz Festival. The third was all of you to the lap. We'll enjoy your scene to the on the way. Can't get the speaker stuff. Don't speakers giveaways every week. Please take a seat, but you'll only need the edge. Mmm. Welcome. You know what? Hold on a sec. Let me see if I can ask her. Hold on. You guys are going to hear face Facebook noises. I know she always has her Facebook open. Uh, let's see. Message. Hey, what was that one dish you made that was vegan something that was a bust? All right. Let's see if she replies. It says scene. It says scene. This is the same, that's the same message I get when I submit any feedback to Guild Wars 2 chat. Scene. That's all I get. Uh, the speech bubbles in the background, though. And now when she cooks food and brings dishes, she swears she say recipe tastes nothing like it. Vegan, that explains it. Yeah. Uh, that gives me flashbacks of me growing up. My mom would always ask for help around the kitchen, so I'd be the one doing it most of the time, so I know all the recipes, I can eyeball it. That's awesome. I, I didn't really learn how to cook at all growing up and i tried to like i don't want gabe to just live off ramen and pop tarts like i did so i constantly encourage my wife to like get gabe involved in the kitchen when she's like making stuff uh wait even to see if she responds i don't know maybe maybe she just has her laptop open and she's just snoring with her face on the keyboard I don't, i'm not sure time i know it's time i know it's time oh wait she's typing She's rolling her face on the keyboard. Meanwhile, Muck is banned from the kitchen. I only made a cereal fire that one time. My compensating sword. I don't... Okay, she says, I don't remember exactly, but it was made with falafel mix, diced tomatoes, and chickpeas. There you go. That That's the information. That's the information. I just remember it was like weird dry porridge moving around in my face. It was super, gr that's super gritty. Yeah. Falafel. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure it's those, those made from those, uh, the short people in Final Fantasy. The Falafels. <laughs> How do you say it? <laughs> I don't know this word. All right, hold on. Pronounce falafel. Falafel. Falafel? I thought a falafel was like a waffle. Falafel. All right. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Does she still say... Hold on a sec. Hold on. Does she still say... Hold on. Calzone. No, they fixed it. <laughs> For the longest time, if you typed in calzone on Google, she would say calzoni. And I used to play it whenever Julia, who's Italian, would stop by and she'd get so mad. <laughs> she would get so mad. Oh, man. I hate that they fixed that. My calzoni. 
Archipelago. A falafel is like a vegetarian meatball made of chickpeas. Well, it was it was kind of a bust here. It's kind of a bust. Try lasagna. I love lasagna. I I will uh, I will go into uh, like a uh, macaroni grill and be like, I would like the lasagna bolognese, please. And they they're just like, oh. And then they serve me the food and it's delicious. It's fantastic. It's very odd. Chickpeas are usually very good tasting fishes. I don't know. It, it, it might have been a. We might we might have made a mistake when we were preparing it or something. I just remember it was the first time in like a year plus that all three of us were like, we can't eat this. Uh, hello, I'm new to the game, and I was wondering if Scrapper or Bladesworn can wait. What? Oh, dude, chat moved, and I read can be dry. Uh, Scrapper or Bladesworn is stronger. They're both very powerful at what they do. Bladesworn does a bunch of damage. And it can also provide the buff Alacrity to its team, which reduces their cooldowns. The Scrapper can do a bunch of damage. Or it can do damage while, uh, or it can do less damage while providing a buff called Quickness to the team, which speeds up everyone's animation so they're faster. Uh, both can be just pure damage dealers, or they can be damage dealers that provide a buff that makes them popular in groups. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, okay, I gotta, I gotta wrap up. I've just got a few minutes left. Uh, was it calzone? Not, uh, not to say, but I am Italian, and is the wrong calzone is pronounced even now. I was under the impression that calzone is the correct way to say it, and calzoni is the make Julia angry way to say it. I did not know there was a third way. You got, you got to stop making up new ways. You can't, bl you can't blame us Americans when you keep making up new ways to say this. Uh, the mistake is calling it veg vegan falafel. That's probably where the issue arose. Falafel's already. Do your research if something is already vegan, searching a vegan. Well, no, no. The full dish was vegan knives. Like, she mixed it with other things, right? I'm not saying the falafel was the only part of it that was vegan. Like, it was a bunch of stuff mixed together. I wish I, I, wish I had it in front of you to show you. But, anyway. Uh, okay, let's see. We went over the patch notes. We went over that. Uh... I noticed a lot of people, though. Okay. I just, I feel like you were thinking I was being stupid. And you should know I'm already stupid, but not that kind of stupid. Like, give me some credit. I'm a different flavor of dumb. <laughs> I think I got some mail. I always have mail! Oh, that's, oh, there we go. It's because I'm on the Herald. All the daily stuff. Nom 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 nom. There we go. It's fine for the super eventual. Great. Delivery from Blacklight. Hey, nice. I was running low on these. I was almost out, chat. Wonderful. Now I could finally reskin my stuff. How many did I have? I was down to 1,941 transmutation charges. Different flavor of dumb could be worse than what you could be in R. True. True. Do you not have the silver coin? No. I don't do enough SAB for that. Oh, okay. All right, chat. I'm stalling because I don't want to leave. Like I said, I love my job, but I need to wrap things up here. So thank you guys for a wonderful morning stream. I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out. A couple plugs on the way out. If you're new to my channel, my name is Muckluck. I stream every single evening and every weekday morning. So I'll be back later tonight for more Guild Wars 2 and then some variety content after that. For those of you interested, uh, hit the follow button here on Twitch or like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. It really does help us out. These are links to my two YouTube channels. Uh, the first one's got the edited stuff, such as the guides and things like that most people know me for. The second one has got a playlist for every game I do on stream. There's over 10,000 videos on that second channel for your binging pleasure. So if you want to watch me play, uh, dude, I don't know, Visage and almost poop my pants, uh, that's there. You can watch that. It's there. And uh, lastly, a thank you to the patrons. They're wonderful people. They keep me uh, in business and keep our website ad-free, all that good stuff. And there's a link to that if you're interested. Uh, with that, I am going to find someone to raid just to show some support to another streamer. If you will hang on just a second on the Twitch side. Uh, oh, RTO's live. He is someone I'm a fan of. I'll drop a raid on him. I will see you guys on the other side. And with that, uh, yeah, like I said, I'll be back in about five hours if you want to join me again for the good stuff. All right. See ya.